uh, very often my software here takes uh, a little bit of my time to get live so uh, I may still not be live okay I see us live hi everybody and welcome this is the apostate prophet I hope you're having a fantastic wonderful beautiful day or evening or night or wherever you are uh, situated wherever you people are uh, hope you're all doing very well <clears throat> Welcome once again to the Apostate Prophet channel. I'm here uh, today with David Wood. It's been quite a while. We haven't done anything in a long time. Yeah, it's time. been way, way too long. We yeah. should be going. We should be going live like at least once a week. We should. That 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 that, that was our commitment. We wanted to go live like every uh, every week or so, and then yeah, we just didn't do that. It's because uh, it's because we are not the greatest planners. I'm not a great planner. David Wood is not a great planner. We are, no, no, no. I am the best of planners. I just have so many other plans <laughs> in my constant, endless line of plotting that some plans are like down the list in terms of uh, in terms of my planning. That's 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 the main reason uh, I got a problem with Allah. He he runs around bragging about being the best of plotters, best of planners. <laughs> I'm the best of plotters and the best of planners. Yeah. And Allah yeah. is trying to steal my thunder. That's why we got beef. All right, go ahead. <laughs> No, that's 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 it. That's the, also what I wanted to say. What have you been doing? We have been um, we've, we've been wanting to talk to talk to each other for quite a while. We wanted to go live for quite a while. We uh, what is this? I think there is some freezing going on. I hope everything is okay. Can yeah, please can please everybody tell me what in the world? Oh my god! Um, yeah. So the question would be whether that's uh, whether they still hear you clearly or you're actually freezing. My CPU uh, usage is about at 99%. That's fantastic, of course. I will try to close my... Oh, God. Hello, everybody. Can, can everybody still hear me? Uh, everything fine? Nadaverse said, hey, it's good now. I hope it's good. I still see that there is some lag going on. Man, man, man. So much mess today. So... Um, if everything looks good, fantastic. Uh, I, I was just very busy. Um, I, I was I was uh, actually wanting to prepare a topic on uh, on Muhammad's wickedness. That's what the that's what the title of this chat is about. And I wanted to sit down and uh, you know just just so that everybody goes through the whole uh, summary of Muhammad's wickedness again together. Here, I wanted to uh, to get all the relevant sources that I can get about uh, about Muhammad's wickedness. But then something <clears throat> happened. And I have to talk about this. Um, I, I announced right here earlier today that Mohammed Hijab agreed to have a debate with me because uh, two days ago, I challenged him to a debate. I said, hey, uh, I hereby challenge Mohammed Hijab again to a debate. And here are the conditions. Condition number one is that the topic is, uh, is Islam the truth? Condition number two is that it's, it's going to be moderated. It's going to be on a, on a third party platform. Uh, and so forth. He then uh, insisted that he should also have the right to personally insult me, to personally attack me. He said, I just demand complete freedom of speech. I cannot hold back. I need to personally insult you because I hate you. And I said, fine, whatever. I, I know that you hate me. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, hold on right there, because that, that's interesting. Because w when I debated him, it was um, actually made a condition of the debate from the Muslim side, from the Muslims who are arranging the debate. The Muslims are arranging the debate. And it was required that we all agree, no personal attacks, no insults, no going off topic. Wow. Wow. Uh, keep it friendly the entire time. I agreed and stuck to it. Hijab agreed and violated everything, every single thing we agreed to. So that's just kind of strange. I don't know why. I don't know why he would say, no, I should be able to insult you. I don't know why he, he wouldn't say, I don't know why he wouldn't just say, yes, we agree that we're we're not going to insult each other and then just do it. That's what that's what he's done in the past. Now, maybe maybe he's worried that because it's not Muslims who are um, who are moderating that uh -huh. if it's a third party that he'll actually be stopped on it. And so yeah. um, maybe it's that. But, yeah, I'm actually surprised that he's trying to come up with terms that he's actually going to stick to. But you said you said you, you'd be fine with uh with insulting. Right. Well, and fun, that's funny. That's like me, right? I'm fine with people insulting. I know I make fun of your prophet all day long. I know that. I know why you want to insult me. I get it. <laughs> but, 
But what I do have a problem with is demanding that I agree that we're going to follow these rules and then people don't follow the rules at all. Yeah, that yeah. that I got a problem with because I, I'm always, you know, if you're talking about insulting, well, guess what? You know, I insult your profit. So, you know, I can't I can't have very hard rules against not insulting. Breaking an agreement, I would never do that. You could saw my head off. I would not break I would not break an yeah, agreement yeah. like that. But uh, yeah. But so anyway, go ahead. I just wanted to jump in there because. No, that's that's that's, that's, that's very good. That's very, 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 very relevant. Because the thing is, um, when I challenged him first, I had a conversation with him like a month ago or so, one, uh, a month ago and a half. And I said to him, uh, hey, if you want to debate these topics with me, because he was texting me on, on, on Twitter for some strange reasons. I don't know. He was apparently in some in some uh, a rare moment of, of uh, kindness. <laughs> and I said, hey, if you want to debate these issues with me, I will be happy to have a debate. Uh, the only issue is that uh, I don't want any personal insults, no personal attacks, no getting into each other's business. We, we're just going to debate, stay on topic, and that's it. He then said to me, uh, because I hate you, I could even put this on the screen. I should actually put this on the screen because it's just because it's so hilarious. <laughs> he said, because I hate you, I will not be uh, able to... You know, to hold back and not insult you. Wait here. Let me let me put this right on the screen. Actually, let let let's 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 see this for everybody to see right here. It's that's how that's how confident and how professional the Muslim apologist is. Look at this. Look at this. He said, "I must be a man of my word because I hate you. I would not be able." Wait, hold on, hold on. A man of his word. <laughs> David, we must all agree that there is to be no insulting during this debate. <laughs> wow. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I must be a man of my word. Because I hate you, I would not be able to avoid personally attack you if we speak. If you allow me to say whatever I want, I can talk to you or have a debate, but I will not be kind. On Twitter, I can give basic dawah to you as I am now. So he, he's saying that he hates me, which I do understand because, you know, he's he's supposed to hate me. That is part of his ideology. He's supposed to hate for Allah and love for Allah. And I am uh, obviously a very, a very uh, problematic critic of Islam. I am an ex-Muslim. I, I, I criticize and insult his holy prophet, which he loves more than his life. So he's supposed to hate me. And he basically admits that here. And uh, so I go ahead and say, I thought so. Attacking me is part of your philosophy. That's a big compromise for me. For honesty, I would ask you to apologize for accusing me of committing and or endorsing incest, which he clearly did uh, completely baselessly, and insulting my mother and sister, which he also explicitly did, and then cited Islamic scholars to, to explain how he is allowed to use that according to his Islamic teachings. I said, but that's not a requirement. We can debate live online with moderator. So this is what happened. That's what I said. Uh, I, I, I don't want him to personally insult me. I don't want us to, 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 to turn this into a whole, you know, uh, business where we insult each other, where we attack each other, where we become very filthy and all that. But since he insisted on that, and since I really wanted this debate to take place, I said, come on, fine. Okay. You're allowed to insult me. Uh, what happened afterwards is that, um, a few days ago, I sent him this challenge again because after this conversation, he suddenly disappeared. Like he suddenly disappeared and went away. This conversation never happened. Uh, a few days ago, I said, hey, here's my final call. I ask, I, I challenge Mohammed Hijab to a debate. It will, be, uh, it will be online. It will be live. It will be moderated, timed, and so on. He then replied and said, uh, said something like, you are not uh, trained and not qualified to have a debate with me, which is why I re re refused to have a debate. So he explicitly <clears throat> rejected to have a debate. He then said, if you want to have a Zoom conversation with me, I can do that. And we, are, we all know how that goes. He sends a Zoom link to people, makes a giant show, doesn't let the person speak, and so on. I said, no, you can have a Zoom conversation with your uh, small-minded followers. I'm going to have a debate with you if you want to have a debate. And I called him a coward. I, I mocked him for a day or so since he's uh, the guy who usually insults and harasses people. He then finally couldn't you know he, he he couldn't he couldn't uh deal with all the mockery and he then said okay i i will agree to have a debate what he did then is to uh you know play with the conditions that i offered eventually he agreed that we can have a debate on a third platform on a third party platform you know moderated by somebody else and i wanted mm -hmm. to suggest this 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 guy you know where where you had your debate with Matt Dilla mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. modern day debate i yeah. thought hey that's a pretty good place very neutral very good uh, moderator let's go and uh, have our debate there uh, he tried to chicken out there for quite a while, 
eventually he accepted that too. Uh, everything done, I announced today that Mohammed Hijab has finally agreed to have a debate with me on the topic of is Islam the truth? That I'm, that I'm excited that we will announce the details very soon. And I said, this will take place online. Everybody will be able to view it. And, and suddenly he comes back tonight and says, um, he says something like, the apostate has just squeezed in another uh, condition that this should be online. I don't agree to an online debate. I wanted to have an in-person debate, which is why this debate will not take place. Well, that's very, that's very uh, funny because previously he actually explicitly <laughs> agreed that we would have this uh, debate online. In fact, let me bring this Whoa, up. whoa, 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 whoa. Based on what you're saying now, I can't believe because as we all know, Hijab is a man of his word. Of course he is, yeah. <laughs> he said it. He said so. <laughs> look, look at this. No, 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 no compulsive liar, no deceiver would ever say that he's a man of his word. <laughs> well, wow. Look at this. Look at this. L let me go through this. I want, I want to uh, show the dishonesty and the, 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 the moral wickedness of two Mohammeds here. One is the, the coward Mohammed uh, from the 21st century that we are talking about today. And one is the, the other uh, dirty uh, Mohammed from the 7th century. I want to talk about both of them today. Uh, let's, for, let's first talk about the coward. I want to show uh, some of the screenshots here. Look at this. Look at this. This, these are not, not in no particular order. Uh, I want to go, go through these. Look. He said here just today, uh, Apus, he's trying to insult me with my, with my uh, apostate prophet name, has not conditioned an online platform and is desperately trying to wriggle out of seeing me in person out of sheer fear. Why would I be afraid to face him? Like, what is there? Is, is, there something, is, is there something threatening about him? Is that what he's trying to imply? Is he a threat to people? This field is not for you. If you want to be a polemicist, you must be brave. I would retire if I were you. So he's saying, I never told him that this would be online. Funnily enough, as you can see here very clearly, I said we can debate live online with moderator. Fine, I will give him the benefit of the doubt, I thought, and assume that he may have he may not have seen this. But then look at this. He made this poll yesterday. It said and said, is it reasonable for mm. both me and the Boston Prophet to upload the online debate on our respective channels? So he clearly acknowledges that this will be an online debate. I'm not understanding this because, again, hijab is a man of his word. <laughs> Look, then this happened. This happened. Look, he's, he, he made this tweet. I said, I said, this is getting exhausting. You're avoiding the confrontation and acting like it was my fault when two days ago you didn't even want to debate. Online was specified here and in my video challenge to you. Oh, I also made a video challenge in which I also clearly specified that this will be online. Nothing to the contrary was specified ever. Say yes and let's start. And then this uh, follower of mine who was uh, kind enough came here and said he knew you challenged him for an online debate. He even acknowledged that in his poll question posted yesterday. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and, and look what Mohammed Hijab says next. There is a difference between an expectation and a condition. You didn't condition me to an online debate and it was not a non-negotiable for you. So why would you let this debate not take place because you fear meeting me in person? So I want everyone to understand what's going on here. He's referring to several conditions that I made a few days ago. Uh, conditions like this is a topic, it will be moderated, it will be timed, and so on. Like, you know, just, just several conditions for when the debate takes place. He agreed to those, and he clearly planned that the, that, that the online criteria was not part of the conditions. He let all of this go through. He never said anything about the, anything in objection to uh, the fact that this would be an online debate. And at the last moment, when I started announcing to everybody that we are now going to have a debate, he suddenly said, uh, well, I want a face to face instead, not an online debate. Uh, you have never uh, made the online condition, which means you are afraid of me. You should just stop doing this. You are apparently you're obviously not brave enough for this for this issue. What happened afterwards is you should all go to Mohammed Hijab's uh, Twitter page. He started ins insulting me, threatening me. I, I hear said, ha ha ha, so you acknowledge that this was explicitly mentioned and acknowledged by you, but you deliberately agreed to the listed conditions because they didn't contain this obvious detail, just so you could chicken out, you coward. Of course, he didn't take this very well. Look what he posted next. Apus, I want to give you sincere advice. 
I think you should commit suicide. Not because you're a talentless coward or because you're a waste of space. I think the world is offering you more pain than pleasure. It is not morally objectionable for you, so why not? I, I guess that kind of makes sense. I mean, since his his you know in Islam, Muhammad is the pattern of conduct for the world, and when anything would go wrong for Muhammad or anything would bother Muhammad in any way, he would rush up to a mountain to hurl himself off. And <laughs> the angel Gabriel, the angel Gabriel had to constantly rush to save Muhammad from jumping off a mountain and jumping off of cliffs. I guess that's now ingrained into Muhammad Hijab's mind that, hey, you know, if you think something's not going well for someone, then tell him to go kill himself like our beloved prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is also very funny. So here is Muhammad Hijab clearly telling that I should commit suicide on a public platform. Of course, he couldn't uh, take the heat of what he has done here, but he is really revealing what he what he, what this what Muhammad Hijab is about. Mm -hmm. uh, after five minutes or so, he deleted this tweet, which was of course too late because uh, everybody <laughs> screenshot it instead, instead of hey, tweeting it's it. A, it's a, it's like him trying to delete the uh, the video with Yasser Khan. <laughs> 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 too late. <son. laughs> <laughs> uh, too late. Where's the delete button? Where's the delete button? He, he, he first tried to cut it. He tried to cut it out, right? And, and then they tried to yeah. delete it, but it's all over the place. Yeah, they deleted that both, right? Yasser Khan deleted it. Both. And yeah, both. Both did from their channels. I mean, I wasn't paying attention to to the video on Hijab's channel, but I saw. Uh, I think it was Jay Smith said that um, in a video that that uh, Muhammad Hijab had scrubbed it from his. But I mean, think about it. He scrubbed the entire interview. He had already cut out. He had already cut out the part, uh -huh. you know, the holes in the narrative part, the, hey, we've got this cute story that we tell amongst ourselves, um, but it actually doesn't work if you talk to actual scholars. It only works when we're talking to, com you know, people who have no yeah. idea what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah. And uh, But uh, I will say, hijab there saying, I'm a man of my word, it reminds me of Yasser Qadi in that interview when Yasser Qadi was saying, you know, I, I'm only going to speak the truth. I, I can't, you know, I can't say other things because I'm only going to speak the truth. And I'm thinking, I have seen you lie over and over and over again. The video that I just posted, the video that I just posted, it's about a, a, a short video of his. It's only a few minutes long. And I realized earlier today that it, I, this video would have to be, my response video would have to be like 40 minutes long if I went through just the lies in yeah. this short little in, in this short little video clip, right? Uh, and it, it, it's stuff he knows, right? If a Muslim wants to say, I, you know, I believe that the Quran has been preserved reliably. Well, that could be true. He could actually believe what he's saying. When Yasser Qadi said in 2012, this is a 2012 video, when Yasser Qadi said that there is not a single letter difference in any two Quran manuscripts anywhere since the time of Uthman, he knows that's a lie. Right. Uh -huh. You had uh, who did you have on your channel who who actually went through differences between the the Hafs and Warsh? Abdullah Gundal. He was here. Yeah. 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 So he he's actually he's actually showing those are clearly differences. Now, if you want to the, the point here is if you want to say, you know, I believe that that these differences can be reconciled with the, you know, the Kirat and stuff like that. And you want to say it can be reconciled. That's one thing to say that they aren't there to say that there is not one single letter of difference anywhere. Since the time of Uthman, he knows that's a flat out lie. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on. He goes. He also says that um, that uh, when Uthman decided to burn all the Quran manuscripts and to issue his standard one, he says everyone agreed. There was no objection. That's another lie. Abdullah ibn Masud was freaking out, telling people to hide their Qurans yeah. to keep this guy. And, and he said, and he said, and he com he specifically commanded his followers do not copy Zaid's. Zaid's Musaf, don't copy it, right? And here's here's Yasser Qadi saying, and everyone agreed that this is a great idea. He specifically said, everyone calls it a great idea. Yeah. And you've got Muhammad's top reciter of the Quran saying, this is the worst idea in the history of Islam. Do not do this. Um, and so you had that. And then, but it, it's just one thing after another. And then it was uh, it was an issue of he was saying that the reason all these other manuscripts had to be burned was because they were 7th, 8th, ninth generation copies 
And that's why they had to be burned. And that's absolute nonsense, right? Abdullah ibn Masud's Quran was his first generation copy, right? He puts that together. Ubay ibn Kab, his Quran was a first generation copy. These guys are all ordered to hand over their Qurans to burn them all. And so it's just, he has, I mean, he knows all of this, right? If, if, yeah, a, young, yeah. if, if a young 18-year-old, 16-year-old, something like that Muslim told me this, I would not think he's lying. I would just think he didn't know what he's talking about. When Yasser Qadi, who's been through the sources like almost no one in the, else in the world, I mean, this guy knows the Muslim sources. When Yasser Qadi, who uh, knows the Muslim sources and was educated at Yale, starts, telling, starts saying these things, it's clear he's just a complete, utter, total liar. So mm -hmm. then when he's being interviewed and he says, but you know, I, I, I only speak the truth. It's like, what are you talking about, right? You know you're, you're a liar. You know you're a liar. And then he blurts it all out. And then, of course, he's being interviewed by Muhammad, I'm a man of I'm a man of my word, the job <laughs> who does nothing but lie, right? And so it's just amazing the, this this sort of fantasy world that these guys live in. And, and what's even more amazing is it's sort of built into their community. I'm not going to say all Muslims because there are, there are Muslims out there who have tons of integrity. I'm talking about the people who are like who are drawn into that crowd, like Muhammad Hijab's actual fans. Mm -hmm. They do not care. Right. Muhammad, Muhammad, if if they find out that Muhammad Hijab agreed to a bunch of terms for our debate and then he violated all of them, they do not care. You deserve I it. I know you deserve it. You mock our prophet. Therefore, he's under no obligation to keep any agreement with you. If Muhammad Hijab made you 50 promises and swore by the great God Allah on every one of them and then broke every one of them and you told his followers they would not care in the slightest. It's built into the ideology that deception when used towards people like us deception is a virtue we we look at deception as a bad thing there are certain there are certain situations where i would say like if you know during world war ii if you're hiding if you're hiding jews in your attic to keep uh -huh. them safe from nazis and stuff like that well that's deception i would say i would yeah. say that that's you're fine with with that sort of thing but with them it's like deceive as much as possible in any way possible and that's a good thing and muhammad said war is deceit and so they take deception uh, you know, deceiving the enemies of Allah as a, a virtue. The more you can deceive, the the better it is. And so it's just a it's just amazing. It's just amazing that we we know that's the case. Their followers can see it. Everyone sees it. It's obvious. And yet these guys will run around bragging, "We're men of integrity. We only speak the truth. We're men of our word." And they're the biggest <laughs> liars on the planet. This is this is what a religion, man. What a religion. Well, you have to think about it. You know, in the, in their religion, in Islam, it is clearly permitted to, uh, you know, if you are at war, you are supposed to, number one, hate the disbeliever. You're supposed to hate what Allah hates. You're supposed to hate those who wage war against Allah and his messenger. And if we criticize Islam and if we, you know, uh, use the, the proof and the criticism and the language that we are using, which is quite appropriate for Islam, uh, then we are in their, under their conditions, we are waging war against Allah. So it is their obligation now as a response, not only to hate us, but also to wage war against us. Muhammad and Hijab and people like him, Muslim apologists and uh, people who follow that crowd, now consider themselves at war with us. Of course, they are not able to directly physically wage war against us because they... Uh, because because the conditions are not there, because the Islamic caliphates have been defeated. There is no more Islamic conquests going on against the infidels in the world. They don't have the power anymore. They don't have the means. They live in the UK or in the, or in the US while glorifying Sharia. What they do now, therefore, is to wage this intellectual war against us. So we are their opponents. We are their enemies in this uh, war between, between Islam and disbelief. Because to them, the world is... This is how the world looks. Here is Islam and here is the disbeliever. All disbelievers are one. We are all one against Islam. That is what they learn. And then they wonder why all these people unite against them. It is because that's what you learn and that's how you treat others. So they consider themselves at war with us, with humanity, with the disbelievers. And at war, they are also allowed explicitly by their scripture and by their prophet to use deceit, to use every filthy, disgusting tactic to win you know to defeat us mm -hmm. to smash us to 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 crush us or whatever you want to call it to finish us and uh th that's exactly what they're doing when muhammad hijab comes out here and lies to us and you know uh de deceitfully lies to everybody including to his own followers he's just doing that he's just being deceitful in war that is what is happening here <clears throat> yeah i i have i have i have i have no doubt that 
basically when, when he, he you know he went ahead and agreed to a debate and then realized that hey this uh you know third party is actually going to be neutral no we need to have it in person we yeah. need to do that i have no doubt that he's thinking uh okay i'm going to get this to where it's you know m- m- my friends as muslim moderator somewhere where we're meeting and then i can break every agreement that that we've actually made for the debate of course. and uh, and of it'll course. be fine yeah. He, he doesn't. He doesn't want to be. He doesn't want to be limited. He doesn't want to be behind a system where if he breaks the rule, he will be you know muted or stopped. He doesn't want that to happen. Which is why he wants to have this in person. He wants to be right there and wants to violate every rule that we have agreed on. That that is what he wants. I see no other explanation to this. My condition was very clear. I want a debate. Uh, I want an online debate. We will do this live. Everyone knows this. So there is only deception, only dishonesty, only filth. And afterwards, after everything has been agreed and to the, the agreement has been announced, to then say, I want it face to face. We never agreed to have an online debate. It is, it is disgusting. It is simply filthy. Uh, we both know how Mohammed Hijab is a giant liar. He's, I think he's even here in the chat right now trying to, get a, trying to attract attention. Uh, we all know that he's a coward. We all know that he has lied to many of us. We know that he lies to his own audience. Uh, he, he, he previously insulted me and my whole family. He lied about them. He said that they were engaging in incestuous activities. That's what he said. And by the way, my mother is a Muslim. And uh, my, my sister should also be as far as he knows. You know? So th- th- that's the kind of person that he is. He takes us out of context. He lies about us. He slanders us. He does all of these things. And then he seriously comes out here and says, I'm a man of my word. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. One, I'm, <clears throat> I'm doing this final announcement. Uh, I, have, I have challenged Mohammed Hijab to a debate very clearly. It was very clear from the very beginning what I want to challenge him on. I have specified the topic, which is, is Islam the truth? And Muhammad Hijab knows well enough never to discuss Islam itself, but always, you know, go against other ideologies because, because he cannot defend Islam, because his faith is just as fragile. His own belief, his personality, his confidence is just as fragile as Islam is. I challenged him to this, and he did everything he could in his hand to, to, to evade this. His followers mindlessly follow him anyway, so th- th- there is not really much he can risk. You know, this is what happened. I challenged him on day one. He rejected. He said, you are not qualified, you are not trained. His followers said, yes, you are not qualified, you are not trained. Mama Tijab doesn't have to debate you. I pushed a little bit. He said, okay, I will debate you. And then, and then, his, and then his followers were like, yes, he will debate you. You are scared, not him. Then we are uh, fighting about conditions, and then they're like, you're not accepting these conditions. You are, a, you are a coward, not him. And in the end, I say, okay, this is going to be an on- online event. Let's go ahead. He says, hey, we never agreed to have it online. And, they, and then they're like, yes, you never agreed to have it online. So he- <laughs> his followers are minions. They will do whatever he says. They will say whatever yeah. he says. They will oh, oh, agree everything. completely. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool. And, and by the way, I actually, I actually love that. <laughs> I love it, and, and 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 it's and it's tough to it's it's tough to explain why, but uh, you know, AP, there's a part of me that hopes you debate Muhammad Hijab and that he crushes you. I I want it. I want it to be destroyed. I, I, why, huh? why? 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 Go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's weird because obviously, you know, obviously, I hope you, you know, the, the main part of me hopes that you crush. You know, you crush Muhammad Hijab and, and show that Islam is false and so on. But there's another part of me. That, let, let me take you way back. Let me take you way back. I'm going to take it. Almost everyone who knows me says I constantly think like a military general. I don't do that on purpose. <laughs> that's just that's just that's just how I think. But um, w- this is going way back to 2005, 2006, back in those days uh, when I started looking in. I started looking for Christian Muslim debates because I would I would uh, I would watch them with people. And uh, going back to like 2002, 2003, 2004, I'd watch them with Nabil. And so I was looking around for uh, for debates, and I noticed almost all the debates were on Christian topics, um, and almost all the debates were with these very, you know, very gentlemanly um, Muslim debaters, like you know Jam- Jamal Badawi and Shabir Ali, and so on. And I was always thinking, 
when I read the Muslim sources, these guys are not, don't seem like real representatives. I mean, Islam is much more thuggish in nature, right? It's much more chest thumping, right? I yeah. mean, we read in the Muslim sources where you remember you had those two brothers and one of them starts going out and killing, like, like kill, goes on a killing spree and his brother's like, whoa, anything that can make you do that must be the true religion. So his brother converts <laughs> to Islam because this guy's going on a killing spree. Yeah. Um, that's the mentality, right? Whatever makes you most you know, violent and aggressive must be the truth because you're so passionate about this. And Nabil, Nabil explained that to me because he he partly had that kind of thinking that if something is making you passionate enough to go out and, you know, like that, it, then it, it must be it must be something true. And he said that's the Islamic uh, mindset. And so it's basically I'm looking at, you know, these nice, calm debaters, Shabir Ali and their quoting sources. And I'm just thinking that is that is one that's not a good rep that's not an accurate representative of the real spirit of Islam, which is aggressive, deceptive. You know, what why are you, why are you why are you guys putting Shabir Ali out there and so on? And then the other thing was, again, that almost all the almost all of the topics were on Christian topics. And so I I thought to myself, those are the things that have to change. One, you need to get Islamic topics in there and you have to actually compel them to address Muslim topics. And so for about a decade, I focused on doing that. And the, the reason I would, the way I did it was, okay, you, if you, Zakir Naik, are not willing to defend Muhammad, then I'll find other Muslims who will. And then the other most, you know, people would say, oh, but you're debating this guy and he's not Zakir Naik. I said, well, Zakir Naik's not willing to debate. I'm going to this guy. Because everyone, uh, Christians up until then, they would say to a Muslim organization, you choose who your champion is. And then uh, they would choose their champion. They would say, we only agree to do these topics. And then so basically they set all the rules, right? And, and uh -huh. they would, we are only going to address a Christian topic. And they used to say back in the day, this used to be conditions of lots of debates with Muslims. This is before your time, AP. But it used to be a condition. If you criticize Muhammad or the Quran in any way, in any portion of this debate, the entire Muslim, the entire Muslim audience will get up and walk out. Really? So, so yeah, th this was wow. a condition back in the day. <laughs> um so, so I'm I'm looking at that and saying this is th these are the things that need to change. So, uh, one, need to get Muslim topics in there, and two, you need some debaters who uh, are better reflect the true spirit and heart of Islam. So, ended up getting it. I've done like seven or eight debates on Muhammad by now, just by just by using that approach and getting. And now it's 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 pretty pretty standard to have a mixture of topics, um, and you know to have to insist upon as many Islamic topics as there are uh, Christian or, or non-Muslim topics. But the the other thing that happened was I sort of cycled through a bunch of you know a bunch of Muslim debaters and never really found someone. What what you're looking for is someone who could be really popular, someone who could win the support of the Muslim community, but who's going to be aggressive, deceptive, condescending, nasty, angry, thumping the chest, oh, I'm strong, oh, I'm the strong one, oh! so really get the Muslim get get the Muslim community riled up. And hey, there's our champion, right? Because here's the thing. They don't get riled up like that for, for Shabir Ali. They just don't. They don't get riled up like that for Jamal Badawi. There are there are nice, calm, reasonable Muslims out there, but there's also this massive portion of the Muslim community that is looking for someone who's thumping their chest and ah, ah, me, me refute you, me refute, me crush you, me strong, <laughs> right? They're looking for that. Yeah. And I'm saying, where is their champion? So we're sitting there going through all these debates and, you know, I debated Bassam Zawadi and and uh, Abdullah Andalusi and Sami Zatari and, and Farhan Qureshi when he was still a Muslim, all these guys, none of them were that. Were that. None of them were what that part of the Muslim community was was looking for. And then Muhammad Hijab came on, came along, had no idea who he was, paid no attention to who he was, debated him, and then I realized that's the guy, man. That is the guy who could be more popular than Zakir Naik. That's the accurate he, position. Yeah, he I, get, is, I get it. He's tapping into... <laughs> spirit of Islam and he will be massively popular and dude I said it you can go back to video clips you can go back to my discussion go back to 2018 when I first noticed that this is the guy right it, that this is the, this is the guy I've been waiting for since 2004 2005 it's the guy who is who is a better reflection of the true spirit of Islam, which, you know, as 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 Muhammad and his followers are going out, it's, hey, look, we're we're violent here. We're aggressive. We we have we treat everyone else with pure contempt. We have no respect for honesty. We have zero integrity. We will lie to you in a heartbeat. We will deceive. We will crush you. And we're going to be thumping our chest and saying that this shows that God is with us every step of the way. And I saw hijab and his community and 
guess what? The overwhelming majority of the Christian community, I don't know about the atheist community, but the overwhelming majority of the Christian community, they look at this and they go, no, we don't want to deal with a guy like this. We want someone respectful like Shabir Ali. We want, and I'm thinking, guys, you don't know. You're giving people a false impression of Islam when you have these gentlemanly scholars and so on come along and represent Islam. You're not showing people what Islam is really like. If you want to, if you want people to know what Islam is really like, you need a different kind of, you need a different kind of Muslim champion, right? Yeah, yeah. Hijab comes along. He's giant. Uh, he speaks with. He, complete condescension towards everyone around him. He's hurling abuse. He's hurling insults. The Muslims are cheering for everything he said. He is so good at it that he can actually, you can give an argument against Islam. He can completely agree with exactly what you said, but act like he's refuting it. And the Muslims will cheer. <laughs> oh, I know. Cheer, right? I know. Don't you remember that? When I said, hey, according to the Quran, Allah prays for Muhammad. <laughs> Muhammad. <laughs> yes, David, huh, it's not to Muhammad. It's for Muhammad. And the crowd <laughs> It's been uh, destroyed. What it, it's like, destroyed. wait a minute. It's, got, it's exactly the sort of person uh, who is like Muhammad. Someone who could, because if you look at Muhammad, if you look at at the, at the Muslim sources, you look at Muhammad. Muhammad was saying some of the stupidest things. I'm talking about Muhammad, the prophet here. Muhammad was saying the stupidest things anyone has ever said in the history of humanity, and yet he's persuading people. Why? He just sounded like he knew what he was talking about. He sounded like he's giving answers to these questions when he's saying some of the dumbest things ever. Anyway, you got someone like Hijab, and he's really tapped into that. So, here's the thing. I said this, you could go back to you could go back to 2018 after I after I after I noticed this, right? After I actually realized that this is this was the guy. This was the guy we've been waiting for. I said, guys, if we can actually get Muslims focused on this younger generation of Mus of chest thumping Muslim apology, if we can, if we can, if we can marginalize the Shabir Ali's and the Jamal Badawi's and these guys, and actually have people like Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa and these kinds of guys representing Islam, these guys will destroy Islam from within. Their 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 egos are too big. They're already they're already massively aggressive. They're already extremely arrogant. If they then get hundreds of thousands of followers supporting them, their egos will go through the roof and they will simply destroy it. They will destroy Islam from within. I said it. <laughs> I said it. That was 2018. Here we are, 2020. And hijab is literally ending the careers of top Muslim scholars, right? And destroying He's people's right confidence. Destroying people's confidence <laughs> in the Quran. I, there's, there's been nothing like this in my lifetime that, that came through the Quran, the story of the Quran, the narrative of the Quran, like a wrecking ball, like Muhammad Hijab just did in his interview with Yasser Qadi. Nothing, nothing like this. I mean, this endless material. And so we're in this situation. That, so that's, anyway, that's, here, funny. that's funny. I want to say that. Um, it was always expected that, that we, the enemies of Islam, would you know destroy Islam, and th that that's the talk. And then it is the main, it is the, 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 the one of the biggest contemporary scholars and one of the biggest apologists coming together and destroying Islam so massively that they have to delete it to to yeah. to, to, to make it disappear, which will not happen. <laughs> yeah, and, and the the reason for that is the the younger generation of Muslim apologists they don't have the kind of wisdom about what you need to keep off limits and what you need to keep quiet and what you need to com not comment on and what you need to uh, you shouldn't discuss in public they don't have that it's it's full speed of head we'll crush everything that gets in our way uh and and uh, islam is proven true by everything so they want to bring everything to the surface and i i knew it i could tell these guys would these guys would just would destroy islam and that anyway that's why that's why i said there's a part of me there's a part of me that that hopes hijab just crushes you because I I don't want him to get less. It, it, I mean, think if you if you went in there and wrecked if you went in there and wrecked Muhammad hijab, and then people stopped following him, we're not done with Muhammad hijab yet. He's going to be too useful to us, right? Think if he just ended Yasser Qadi, just like it was a <laughs> joke, right? Get out of here, Yasser Qadi! Boom, done. I mean, Yasser Qadi was a guy who was just a few years ago. This was James White was bowing to this guy. Yes. You this is you're my source of all information on all things Islamic, right? So he's sitting here praising and. Now now he's gone. He's done. No one wants to come within a thousand miles of this guy. And this is, <laughs> and here's the thing, hijab is just getting started. So what I'm worried about, what I'm worried about right now, 
is that hijab is going to recognize, whoa, I need to be more careful, man. If someone tells me don't, don't, he doesn't want to talk about something, I need to not talk about it. I'm worried about him pulling back, looking at, at the damage he's caused, looking at the Muslims who are apostatizing because they recognize that their beliefs about the Quran are complete nonsense and that it was exposed on Muhammad's channel. And then, and then seeing hijab and Yasser Qadi and all them delete it, and all these Muslims are going, whoa, why are they deleting all this stuff? What did they do? <laughs> they come watch this stuff on our channels because they're deleting it on their channels, right? I'm thinking... You know, hijab might actually pull back and say, hey, you know, I need to I need to grow in maturity and so on before I go out there like this. Um, but if if something happens where he crushed the apostate prophet, then everyone would cheer him on again. And that that uh, that that arrogance and narcissism would fill him again. And then what would happen? Well, he would go out full full speed ahead. And who's going down? Soccer Knight's about to get crushed by this dude. Right. Everyone's going to get crushed. He's gonna <laughs> He's going to tear everyone else down to lift himself up, and it would be a beautiful spectacle to watch. And so, again, you know, I'd like to see him refuted. But when I'm thinking, when the general, when the military general side of me is thinking, I'm thinking long term, I really want hijab to be the representative of Islam out there. I want him to be bigger than Zakir Naik. And as horrifying as that is to other people, no, why? Why the guy who thumps his chest and just told AP to, to commit suicide? Why this guy? Why this guy? I'm thinking exactly why. That is exactly <laughs> why. All of the things that we find repulsive, so we don't want all of the character traits that we find repulsive, and we say we don't want those anywhere near, those are part of Islam, ladies and gentlemen. And so you need people who exhibit those characteristics and those traits so that people understand what Islam really is. So, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. I mean, think about it. If you if you could have Muhammad, the actual prophet Muhammad in the room or you could have some nice gentlemanly Muslim in the room, you would rather have some nice gentlemanly Muslim in the room with you. But if you really wanted people to understand Islam, you want the prophet Muhammad covered in semen. You know, uh, with, with, this, with nine wives, and and you you want that guy. That's the guy yeah, you want yeah. in the room to give people a real impression of what Islam really teaches. Anyway, I know I, I went on a big uh, big rant there. No, but it's good. It's that's good. It's good. Uh, I st I started picking apart a, a, a few things. It, I, th it's so funny. This guy is telling me all day. This guy is telling me has been telling me for several days now how unworthy and unimportant I am, and how he cannot waste his time with me. He has more important things to do. He, he's, I know, he, he's, he's right here in the comment section. He's right here spamming the live chat. He's watching our stream here, making this, the, the, the dumbest, most childish comments that I've seen in my, in my, in my live chat so far. It's, it's really incredible how much you are embarrassing yourself, dear Mohammed Tijab. I really... Hey, hey. Go, oh, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was, I was, I was just going to say, it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of funny because over on my channel, me and Sam Shamoon, we had Mohammed week. We said, uh, we said any Muslim... Uh, one or two Muslims at a time who wants to call in and join us live, you, we will give you time to make a case for your prophet for why people should believe that you are a prophet, that Muhammad's a prophet, and that uh, we would then have a friendly discussion about your reasons. And all the Muslims are saying, ah, Muhammad Hijab will destroy you. Yeah, only Dhamma will destroy you. <laughs> These guys just never call in. And it's the same, Adnan Rashid. And it's funny because Adnan Rashid and Farid responds and all these guys, they have all the time in the world to make videos about us. But when we invite them on live, hey, talk to you can, you can talk to our entire viewership. They don't want to come near it. They don't want to come anywhere near it. And it's to defend their profit. And guys, you will, I'm sure you're not shocked to find out, but it is difficult to find Muslims who are actually willing to defend their prophet. They want all of those topics off limit. They don't want to come near defending their prophet. And so... Let me uh, tell you something. Speaking of uh, Ali Dawa, uh, Muhammad Hijab is right now doing exactly what Ali Dawa did. He's doing exactly that in, in different ways, but he's kind of doing what he did. Ali Dawa, several months ago, maybe half a year ago, maybe, maybe more, I don't know. I've completely lost my perception of time since then, uh, dealing with these people. He asked me, uh, he said, hey, uh, I will destroy you, you boy, you boy. I don't even know what that means. I will we'll get smashed. I will, we'll get smashed. You. I will destroy you, this and that. We'll get smashed. Come here, face me. Be a man, face me. And, and I said, and I said, <laughs> <laughs> and I said okay, okay, Ali Dawa, I will, I will face you. Let's have a debate. Let's meet up. 
either either here in America or somewhere else. I don't know. Let's meet up and have a debate. Suddenly, Al Dawa disappeared and started making excuses, started insulting me, started uh, making completely weird statements about me and my private life that he thought I was engaged in. I don't know. He 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 turned it around like that. He challenged me first. I said, "Okay, let's have a debate." And then he suddenly chickened out, started insulting me, went away. Mohammed Hijab said half a year ago, I will destroy you. You are a cockroach. Your your followers are sheep. You are, I don't know, a boy. You're finished. I will destroy you like like Habib. And I said, I, I came out. I said, okay, fine. Let's... <laughs> like Habib. <laughs> did you actually say like Habib or did you I, add that? Because I, I said he, he made some MMA references. Like when we lock eyes, you will crap your pants and, you know. To, you know, you don't have the muscles, you're not physically ready. What has what physically ready to do with debating Islam, you, you moron? Anyway, so um, I agreed to have a debate with this guy and he made excuse after excuse, excuse after excuse to chicken out and go away. I really want to repeat one thing here. I challenged Mohammed Hijab. Am I my centered? I don't even know. <laughs> I challenged Mohammed Hijab uh, two days ago. I challenged him actually one month ago. I challenged him two weeks ago, and I challenged him two days ago, three times. I want to make it clear again, despite the horrible, idiotic, childish behavior that he has been, uh, you know, that he has been presenting, that everyone can clearly observe here, right down here in our live uh, chat comment section, which he doesn't want to attend, of course, because he has more important things to do, because he's the great Mohammed Hijab. Uh, I challenged him before, I challenged him three times, I want to challenge him again, despite everything that he has done, just because I want this debate to happen. I want to debate Mohammed Hijab, as we have agreed over the last few days, in an online to an online debate. I want to have an online debate with Mohammed Hijab. I want to sit down. I want to have a good moderator, modern day debate. The guy is a very great moderator, is, is, is very neutral, very kind guy, has a, has a good channel where many great debates are being are being held. David Wood was also there and had a debate. Matt Delante is there having a debate and so on. I want to have a debate with Mohammed Hijab right there. Mohammed Hijab's only condition explicitly said by him several times, his only condition is that he will be allowed to personally attack me. He wants freedom of speech because he hates me and he cannot uh, hold himself back. He needs to attack me. I grant him that permission. It's fine. You can attack me. You can personally attack me. You can insult me. Whatever. Whatever you want. You, you, if, if that's your nature, if that's who you are, and we all, I guess, we, we know that all by, by now, then do that. No problem at all. But sit down with me and have a debate about whether Islam is the truth. You know very well, I told you from the very beginning, that this was going to be an online debate. If you want to accept it, accept it right now, right now. If you don't want to accept it and, and keep going on about, oh no, meet me face to face and this and that, then get out and be known as a coward. And you should know that within the following days, I will break this down. I will document each step of your behavior, of all your approaches, of all, of all the different ways that you have tried to evade this simple debate. And I will make a nice video Putting out, put it out there and show to the entire world, including to your own audience, what a giant coward you are, Mohammed Hijab. Um, Here's a final chance for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so, so think about this. Uh, one, he's saying, you know, you're not worth the time and he's too busy and stuff like that, but he hangs out in the <laughs> chat while you're, while you're live streaming. He probably hangs out in all your chats. Yeah, yeah he's, he's probably just, always uh, there. He finally couldn't control himself and... <laughs> And commented, but um, <clears throat> think about this. So he's either pulling a Zuck or a Nike move, right? Where he knows you don't want to, you know, travel somewhere and set up a debate in person. Um, but notice, I mean, if he's if you're saying you're you're not worth it, you're not that important. Well, that would make sense for that would make more sense for an online debate, right? Because then, yeah. hey, it's easy. We don't have to travel. If I'm not that important, then obviously we should just uh, we should just have a quick online debate, no problem. So why would you want to make a big event out of it? But uh, two, notice, you know, I pointed out earlier that. Hijab is always looking for some advantage. And so what I would guess, what I would guess is that, you know, like like Zakir Naik, he wants to 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 stack the audience with Muslims who are going to cheer for everything he says, even if he says something that completely agrees with you, even if he just repeats what you just said, the audience will cheer for it, right? I, I know, I know, I know Christians from India, they say when Zakir Naik does an event. They said they're all when he's doing an, an, an event in English. They said that the audience will be stacked with 
uh, with Indian Muslims who do not even speak English. Mm -hmm. They're just trained. When everyone else starts cheering, then cheer like crazy. Or when he raises his ver voice in a cer certain way, start cheering like crazy. So you have Honestly. thousands of you have thousands of Muslims in an audience mindlessly cheering for things they do not understand in order to give the impression that he's saying really awesome stuff. I would guess his job is trying to pull a stunt like that. You can't do it online. If it's one-on-one -on -one and then a moderator online, you can't get that crowd into yeah, it yeah. mindlessly cheering for every dumb thing you say. I explicitly planned this. I very clearly planned this. I think it is quite obvious why, how, I, how I planned it this way and how I presented my conditions. I, I know exactly what Mohammed Hijab does. He goes out there, he uh, goes with his with his little gang. He uh, you know builds a stage where his his guys are present. His little 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 guys are present. Where where he has the footage. He streams it to his channel. He controls the debate title, the description, the the the, the comment section. I mean, j just look at the at the comment section of the of the debates that he has. The comments are so restricted. Negative comments are not allowed. And he has to approve every comment that comes in. And he only approves comments that are in favor of Islam. That's how he conducts his debates. You can, other, you can see that very clearly. The other comments get abrogated. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, his, like his discussion with Yasser Khan. <laughs> so Mohammed Hijab manipulates public opinion whenever he has an ex ex uh, encounter with uh, somebody else who challenges him. He also does this typical thing where he wants to act like an MMA fighter and stand in front of a crowd, have a bunch of Muslims there and just, you know, have these, have these childish exchanges with them, like uh, ask them to raise their voice and to applaud him and, you know, do, do, this, do, do all these weird things. Just look into the room for validation because he has nothing in his head and he, he has no confidence and his faith is a bunch of garbage. That's why I very clearly designed this and said, it's going to be an online debate. You will come out of your of your comfort zone. You will be there in a in a in a in a room where you don't where you're not not in your typical environment. We will have a neutral moderator so that we are both in the same conditions. We are both in in the same fair conditions. We will have rules. It will be online, and you will not be able to have any possession of the debate footage. The debate footage will be ex exclusively owned by a third party platform. I clearly designed all of this exactly because of his past disgusting behavior. And no, you, he didn't do you it. filth, you filthy kafir. Let me tell you what the rules are going to be. We are <laughs> going to meet in person, and the moderator is going to be Muslim, and uh, you have to agree to a bunch of rules, which I'm not going to follow at all. I'm going to break everything we agree to, but you have to stick to it. <laughs> uh, I want the room stacked with with Muslims who are going to cheer for for anything I say, and then I get the footage. And then I'm going to delete all, all comments that are critical of me in any way. Those are the rules. That's what, a, that's what we call a fair debate in Islam. And if you, don't, if you do not agree to it, you're a coward. You're a coward. <laughs> you're, you're, scared to, you're scared to meet me in person. Oh, oh, you're scared. Oh, 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 oh. He's, he's, he's scared of me. I destroy him. You're, so what, you're scared you get smashed <laughs> like my boy Khabib did. Khabib, Khabib, watch some MMA. <laughs> I was already... Well, I was, but, I was getting, okay. I was, I was getting ready. I was like, I was getting into the mood. Like he finally told me that he has accepted my conditions. He's going to have a debate with me. I was putting some MMA videos in line. I was trying to, you know, go to the gym. I was going to hit the gym to get my, to get my muscles here in, in, in shape. I was trying to find out more about the story of Khabib and how he defeats his, uh, his, his enemies, his opponents, how he smashes and destroys them. I was really preparing here, but unfortunately, yeah, um, I, I, I did want to say though that, uh, that the reason it is so awesome to do what we do right now, the reason this is so fun is that the, the other thing, you know, I, I talked about, I talked about, uh, you know, things I planned in 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, these times uh, when I'm thinking, hey, what needs to change and, and what needs to get done and, um, you know, for years, I don't, I don't, say this stuff in public because you don't want to know your plans but i i've i've come to realize that you know massive portions of the the muslim community they're they 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 sort of can't stop themselves right they can't say oh david said this therefore we'll do something else so i could pretty much i could pretty much say exactly what i'm thinking there's nothing they could do about it they're sort of locked into their approach but the idea is my goal when when i thought of what is like the dream situation if you really want to do damage to Islam, if you want to see Islam, the ideology, crumble in our lifetimes, what do we need? And I just thought, well, Islam is really 
personality and authority based. Uh, I'm sure you've experienced this probably mm -hmm. tens of thousands of times, AP, where you can give an argument. They don't respond to the argument. They attack you. Yeah. Right. So All it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, I lay out my argument and then, whoa, whoa, whoa you, can, you can't trust David. He doesn't speak Arabic. Uh, you you can't trust apostate prophet. He was not a real Muslim before, right? It doesn't matter, right? It, it's to discredit the person. It's like, wait, wait a minute. If I if I lay out an argument, if I say, all men are mortal, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. That argument stands or falls on its own merit. It doesn't matter who it's coming from, yeah, right? Yeah, it, yeah. I, I'm irrelevant. Exactly. That could be coming from a man, could be coming from a woman, could be coming from an atheist, could be coming from a Christian, could be coming from a Muslim. But the source doesn't matter. It's whether the argument is good or bad. In Islam, the main goal of their their apologetics is to discredit the person who's giving the argument in order to convince Muslims that you should not listen to the argument, in which case you do not have to examine the argument or respond to the argument. So I basically recognized years ago, man, we could get into this dream situation, this like this perfect fantasy world situation. Like you couldn't dream of a better situation than this if you want to really blast away at Islam. If we can get into a situation where we are blasting away constantly, endlessly, daily. We are blasting away at the foundations of Islam. We are discrediting Muhammad. We're discrediting the, the Quran. We're shattering the myths that their entire religion has been founded upon. If we can get into a situation where we've got our cannons and we're constantly blasting away at the foundations of Islam, but Muslim apologists are so enraged at us and their their uh, their ideology somehow compels them to be authority and personality based. We'll get into a situation where they're blasting away at us, constantly attacking us, trying to discredit us. Meanwhile, we're blasting away at the foundations of their religion. If we can get into that situation, they're done. The yeah. the, the, the ideology is done. It's a matter of time. The reason it's a matter of time is at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, I'm inconsequential. AP is inconsequential, meaning we're not foundational to anything. You could say you like us and we do great work. That's not that's not the same thing. There are other people who can come along and do great work. There's no one else who can come along and be Muhammad for Muslims. There's no one else that there's nothing else that can come along and be the Quran. If Muhammad and the Quran and the myths that they're founded upon are shattered, there's nothing else, right? So if we get into the situation where we're going after the foundations of their religion, but they can't stop attacking us personally, guess what? If we do massive damage to to Muhammad and the Quran during our lifetimes, and at the, you know by the end of our lives they convince us, oh, don't believe in them, they're jokes. Great, what have you done? We 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 weren't relevant. <laughs> we weren't relevant to anything. There is no ideology that depends on us, right? Uh, Islam depends on Muhammad and the Quran. So if we're discrediting Muhammad and the Quran, and you're discrediting us, you lose. You lose. Yep, You're going to yep, lose, yep. and it's a matter of time. So I've been thinking about that, getting into that situation. And then I look, and then there's like 40 Muslim channels that are all dedicated to attacking my videos and attacking me. And I, meanwhile, I'm blasting away at Muhammad and the Quran constantly, and they're attacking me. And I'm like, do you guys, do you not realize? Do you not realize you've already <laughs> lost? Done. You're done. We're locked in. Might be three years, might be three years, might be 30 years, but you, you, you've already lost this one. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I, that, that is one of the, I mean, that's kind of uh, in the direction of why I wanted to have this debate with, with Mohammed Hijab. This is, you know, the, the, the topic is very clear. If you look at the history of, of Mohammed Hijab having uh, debates with people, he never, ever debates Islam itself. He never debates the, the, the truth and, the, uh, you know, the, the, the theology of Islam itself. He debates about, about morality, which you can debate about forever. It will not do a thing. He debates about other ideologies. None of that will do a thing. I want to stand with, there with this guy and just debate about Islam itself. The, the the core, the foundation of everything that he believes in and that, and that his followers believe in. I knew exactly that he would never accept this debate unless maybe he will be pushed enough that he won't want to be a coward, a, won't want to be called a coward anymore and will probably maybe, maybe eventually accept the debate, which will be a huge mistake for him. But I knew exactly that he would do everything to run away from this. I will still publish a video about uh, what a giant coward he is because he has demonstrated it so badly and he has been a disgusting individual. But please, everybody, let's have this debate. Let's have this conversation. 
let us let Muhammad Hijab defend Islam itself directly and let him explain whether Islam is the truth or not. I'm not even I'm not even being arrogant. I'm not I'm not, I'm not he trusting myself here. I'm not making myself this, this 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 big guy. I'm not caring about about defeating somebody or smashing somebody. I don't care about that childish nonsense. That's not what I am. That's what these people are about. I just want to sit there and have a genuine conversation between these two people, me and him about whether Islam is the truth or not. Very simple, nothing else. I know he does exactly what you, what you, what you were just saying. He doesn't even come after my, my intellect or my education. He targets my, uh, my, my, my body, my muscles. My fighting abilities, my fitness. What the hell? What are you, what are you talking about? You, you could not stand up to Khabib. Khabib would smash you, boy. What kind of? What this, kind this of is the, this is the power of Al Islam. <laughs> Al Islam. I love this. this. I, it's funny. It's funny. We're sitting here making fun of it, but I'm sitting here thinking, I love this dude, man. I cannot. I cannot. If I, if, if using my limited creative abilities, if you had said, David, design the perfect representative of Islam that you want for the future. I could have come up with like 85 to 90 percent of hijab, but he's just he's he's better. He's better than I could that could have dreamed of. I wouldn't have dreamed of the like six foot eight. It wouldn't have entered my mind. I wouldn't have, because I don't. There just aren't a lot of people like that. Uh, it, you know. So yeah, I was just you know he's just wow, wow. What a <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome stuff. Oh yeah, yo, ch hey, check this out. So I got this video clip. Well, by the way, and... I, have to, I have to say something. Don't don't forget oh, what, what you're saying. Um, the stream was called uh, Muhammad's uh, Wicked Morality, but we have spent an, an hour talking about Muhammad Hijab's cowardice instead. So I changed can, the topic. I changed the topic and made it Muhammad Hijab's cowardice. I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, you can always uh, you can always change the topic afterwards so that people yeah, yeah. Uh, people yeah. who who are clicking on it know what they're know what they're yeah. going to do. I do that. I do that all the time. Uh, change the topic after we find out what we're actually. Uh, sometimes topics change, yeah. but um, uh, hijab. So in, in in our debate, when I said, "Hey, look, according to Quran, Allah prays for Muhammad," hijab got up. Huh? This is a career-ending mistake for David Wood. He doesn't know <laughs> Arabic. Let me show you. Huh? It's 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 not Allah. It's Allah prays for Muhammad, not to Muhammad. And the crowd burst into cheers. Right? <laughs> said exactly <laughs> what I said. Allah prays for Muhammad. Right? Now check this out. Now obviously after the debate. He caught some flack after uh, uh, over that, and people were asking about it. I got a video of him talking to Hatun Tosh, and notice I can make a I can make a video about this right now. I talked about it on a live stream way back in the day, but uh, um, you know I can make it I can make a video out of this to really show this guy's character because uh, you know I don't remember what it was. A week or two later, he was at um, he was at Speaker's Corner, and Hatun Tosh asked him, well. What, what? Why did you say? What? Why did you say that Allah prays for Muhammad? You you admitted that Allah prays for Muhammad. He's no, I didn't. No, I never said it. I never said it. And then so she starts going. She starts looking for the video clip. She starts looking for the video clip of him saying it. And then paraphrasing here, we could find the we could find the clip to. Uh, I, I still got it on my computer, but we could actually uh, we could actually look at what he what he said. But think about this, ladies and gentlemen. He's talking to Hatun Tash, and then he responds to Hatun Tash. He goes, Oh, I get it. You don't speak English very well, so you're confused. You think I said P R A Y S praise? He prays when I said P R A I S E praise. See, that's your problem. You don't know English. And then, of course, his fans, oh his God. little crowd at Speaker's Corner, all He's... cheering. And I'm sitting there looking at that, going, "Wait a minute. There is no way that's what <laughs> that's what he said, right? You don't say Allah prays for Muhammad <laughs> and P R A I S E. It doesn't make any sense. He would be the one who doesn't speak English there if that's what he yeah. was saying. But he knows that he's talking to Hatun. English is her second language. And but notice the parallel, right? When he's talking to me, he agrees with me completely, <laughs> lies about what I said, and then ha ha, it's because David doesn't speak Arabic, and his his fans cheer. Then he's talking to Hatun. He does the exact same thing, except he lies about what he said and then attacks her her English ability. And then his fans love it. Yay! <laughs> Muhammad destroyed her. And I'm like, this is your champion, Muslims? A guy who's, who's, whose primary tactic is attacking, is lying and then attacking your language ability and then getting a, a, a crowd who can't, who, who can't follow anything that was said but are going to mindlessly cheer for it. This is the champion. And I, I we discussed that in a live stream back then. And it was shortly after that was that was shortly after the debate. But it was shortly after that that I realized I'm actually going to stop going after this guy.
because I want this guy to blow up in popularity for a while. Let him blow up for five or ten years. Become bigger than Zucker Nike. And then they will have this <laughs> the great ape of, of apologetics here. <laughs> so, the, 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 With Ali Dawa, his bigly bigly. You probably <laughs> you're probably too do you, are you too young to know what that means? Bigly bigly what? You don't know what that means? Uh, no, no, no. There was a there's a cartoon there was a cartoon way back in the way back in the day uh, with a uh, great ape. That's not that's not an insult. He was he was just this giant. He was just this giant, like oh, yeah. forty foot forty foot tall. And then his side, he was so big that he would skateboard on a van. Uh -huh. And then his his buddy was Bigly Bigly, and so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, in my, in my generation, you called any really giant person, you just called him Great Ape. It's like, hey, Great Ape, and so that's why that's what comes to mind when when it's when it's a job. But but my goodness, right? This so, is the method. And guess what? Here's what's amazing: they love it. His fans love it. You I know. Could sit, you could sit a it. you could sit a thousand of his fans down, line them all up, and say, okay, I said this. He said the same thing. Made up what I made up something that I didn't say. Then it agreed with what I said. Then claim to destroy me on language. Then, in case you thought that was an accident, in case you thought, no, 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 maybe he just slipped, he wasn't paying attention or something, it was an accident. He then goes somewhere else on a, in a completely different part of the world with a woman, does the same thing, lies about what was said, then attacks her, her language ability, then gets all his fans to cheer. Do you guys have any problem with that? They don't. As long as it sounds like, as long as you give the impression of victory, as long as you are thumping your chest, <laughs> as long as you're doing that, they love you. And so this is this is why I say, man, you can't you cannot have I challenge I challenge every one of you out there. Show me a representative of Islam who should be a Muslim apologist, who should be representing Islam in debates. Show me someone who would be a better reflection of the true heart and spirit of Islam than this guy who just told AP to go to go kill himself. Yep. Who? Yep. Who's better? There is no one. It's the total package. Deception, aggression, all of this stuff. Gosh, man. I said at one point, at some point, like probably over a year ago, I was saying, I said, man, if I didn't actually want to want my money to be used for dawa, I would actually fund these guys. I would, <laughs> I would, bank, I would bankroll them to take over the Islamic apologetics world because that's how that's, that's recently how what happened with is. that's recently what happened with this guy that I was that, uh, that, that was over at my channel for a discussion, Daniel Hikikachu. I invited him here. He made a complete idiot of himself. He said the most horrible things. His logic was so incredibly awful. He really departed from here, sent people over who clearly have uh, Muslim YouTube accounts who come here and say stuff like, uh, I am not, uh, I'm not a Muslim, but I have to agree with Daniel Gikachu here. And they go around insulting me for days, slandering me for days, making stupid little cut videos. And, and the people uh, on my channel are just all saying the same thing. This guy, Daniel Gikachu, has done more damage to Islam than you did in two years. <laughs> that's, that's what they're telling me. Yeah. That, that's that, that's what these people are doing. But you know what? You know what? Mohammed Hijab reminds me of people like mm. him. I, I was when I was in high school. Sorry, I, I don't. I don't want to be that guy right now. I don't want to sound like a nerd. But <laughs> when I was, uh, when I, I was, think you can help that, AP. <laughs> <laughs> no, was, turn, my, no turning back on that one now. <laughs> when I was in high school, I thought you know th th there was like there are groups in high school. You know, in a classroom, there are certain groups of people. And uh, I would I would sit there and I would try to you know study through my stuff still have these uh, conversations with people and there is this group in the in the corner of the room of these completely mindless idiotic people they have like they have uh, one leader who is uh, you know who is doing all the talking because he's the only person who is remotely intelligent and uh, he has no clue of anything that is going on you know in the world but he's just trying to impress his little people in the back by saying these by saying these tough things by saying these cool things by trying to bully people by trying to make uh, completely idiotic remarks about about the world and about everybody else and those people behind him just cheer for him and just applaud him like yeah yeah that's right that's right yeah you're my guy bro and everyone wants to hang out with them that is exactly the mentality of Mohammed Hijab I thought these guys were idiots when I was in high school and I see Mohammed Hijab. He 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 completely reminds me of just those people. I don't see a difference. You, I don't. I I kind of understand it when you when you do stuff like that when you're 16 years old. You know, mm -hmm. if you do stuff like that when you're 16 years old. But we have a guy here who's like I don't know how old he is. He's like 
uh, close to his 40s or something and he's still acting like a complete little moron and i don't want to i don't want to i know you're a christian david <laughs> i don't want to get into these things but i bet you are seeing what he sees what what what, what Mohammed hijab is currently saying in the comment section uh, the is, last comment I saw, he was saying, uh, I should give you a golden shower or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, just in case everyone is not familiar. So uh, so <laughs> earlier he told he told the apostate prophet to kill himself. And now he's saying that I should urinate on the apostate prophet. Now, now f for again, for sexual pleasure, yeah, by the way. That yeah. Is so <laughs> this is europhiliac. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is so, your representative, dear Muslims. Yeah. This is the guy that you are all proud of. And 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 here's here's what's interesting, right? There are tons of Muslims out there who would be horrified at this saying, whoa, whoa, no. And there are other Muslims who yes, yes, tell them to give them them golden showers. Ah, yeah, just like, oh, oh, you smashed him. Your boy got smashed. Your boy got smashed, right? There are people so there are people like that, but guess what? When you go back to the Muslim sources and you ask who's a better representative of Islam here, what did Muhammad say? What did Muhammad say? If anyone if anyone brags about his lineage, tell him to go bite his father's penis and do not <laughs> use a euphemism. That is a quote from Muhammad. What did Abu Bakr say? In the presence of Muhammad, in the presence of Muhammad when they had one of the unbelievers here, he said, go suck a lot's clitoris. Yep. Go perform oral sex on your goddess. That's how these guys talk. So when you see someone like a job, uh, golden shower, uh, me, me, a job, right? That's exactly what, what Muhammad and his companions were like. Exactly, right? That's exactly what they were like. Oh, Muhammad so, is supposed to be the, this 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 morally amazing representative of the Muslim community who 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 fights against the Islamophobes because he represents Islam, which is of course in possession of this amazingly great morality here is a here's a series of four four or five screenshots that i have just taken from all the stuff that he has said in the comment section number one uh Mohammed hijab said get on your knees for david wood this is your uh muslim apologist dear muslims number two david wood can give you a golden shower he is very familiar with that term uh, he said go ahead and give david wood what he wants he's of course implying against something sexual uh get on your knees for your master boy that's what he also said. He's still going on. This is just the, the stuff that I got so far. He's really, I wanted to talk about the wicked morality of Muhammad here this, <laughs> in this live conversation. You're done, dude. You got it. You got but everything you need. I, I, I have the wicked morality <laughs> and the cowardice of Muhammad from the 21st century, of Muhammad Hijab right here. It's right there. And all inspired by Muhammad, by the holy, <laughs> holy prophet, by the amazingly moral prophet Muhammad. This is, this is what you people are. And it's funny because he can't even, you know, he can't even come back later and say that's not him because it's got the check mark yeah, by his name the on screenshots. Yeah. yeah, it's got the check. Wow. And you can go on his profile. You can, you land you can make endless his channel. You can make endless videos. Again, I'm still I'm going to I'm going to let him slide for for a while longer because this dude is too useful. Yeah, this yeah. dude is too useful to what we do. He is. He's basically amplifying it. Right. He's amplifying everything we want we say hey guys the quran's been changed the quran's been altered we try for years and all of a sudden muhammad hijab in an hour and a half interview completely just destroys the faith of muslims in the quran right yeah. i've been trying for years to do that he did it without even trying that's how awesome this guy is that's our new <laughs> champion man that's muhammad hijab with the with, the, with his check mark that he got from dear youtube by telling people that uh, people should be executed for being for 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 leaving Islam hey, is now hey, here hey. crying and telling people to take a golden shower and to give each other yeah. oral sex. Hey, hey, AP, think about it. We can't get we can't get check marks, right? Yeah. I I can't get a check mark. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube YouTube's like no, David, an apostate prophet. You can't you can't get check marks because you criticize Islam. We'll give a check mark to the guy talking about you know getting on your knees and getting a golden shower here because he's the He's the guy we like at YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, wow. I want to, I want to call, I want to call him uh, Muhammad Golden Shower Hijab from now on. That, that's, <laughs> that's what I want Muhammad Hijab to be from now on. Muhammad Golden Shower Hijab. That's that's 
That's what mom did. That, that, that's stuff that I don't say. You know, I'm supposed to be the, the guy who has, who has no morals by his, uh, you know, as, as he says it, who has no standards, no morals, nothing to stand on because I'm an atheist and he's supposed to, to, be, to be the morally superior guy. I would never go out there and say, hey, you should give each other a, a golden showers, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, for real, we you know we blast away at muhammad but we don't have to you we don't have to make stuff up and because <laughs> it's all there right like like uh you know we can go around saying hey why don't you go follow someone who's covered in semen we don't have to make that stuff up right they do they do that right so it's so uh, yeah I, I yeah it would never it would never occur to me to talk like that anyway everybody and, and here here's the here's the thing ap if I were to if I were to go out go around talking to Muslims like that, I would be called out endlessly by Christians. <laughs> yeah. I have thousands of messages from Christians the next day condemning me, saying, "How dare you say that? You're a horrible representative." And here you have the new champion, the new champion, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Khabib, the Khabib of, apolog of Islamic apologetics here. Golden shows, uh, uh, get on your knees for him. Uh, uh. Uh, cool, go kill yourself uh. and muslims love it man they love it not all again not all you have you have uh you have a different kind of muslim out there but the ones who actually have absorbed the spirit of their ideology perfect you can't oh, yeah. get better you can't get any better show I, me i, I challenge i tell you 1.6 billion muslims ladies and gentlemen show me one person in the world who deserves to take the reins of islamic apologetics more <laughs> than this guy I have to say there there are definitely Muslims who uh, will appear here in the comment section or uh, after this live chat who will go out and say, hey, I completely disagree with uh, with what Muhammad Hijab has said. He has uh, acted disgustingly. This is not this is not how we act. There will be Muslims who will go out and say that. I have no doubt about that. Although I have to say, uh, I suspect that most Muslims who say that they don't agree with uh, Muhammad Hijab's approach will also say, but apostate prophet deserves this and this and this and that and that and that but but of course i i grant it there will be muslims who will go out there and say uh, i i really don't agree with 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 Muhammad Hijab's, uh very immoral and disgusting behavior but here we are we have the currently the biggest representative that that that, that these young muslims are so proud of the biggest muslim apologist that these people are so proud of he's telling us to take golden showers by the way to all my to all the viewers to everyone who's in the comment section please let me know how you like the idea of having a poster back there of uh muhammad golden shower hijab that, that would be a fantastic thing for my background let me tell me what hey, you uh, think hey, ap and i mean think about this right this is the guy this is the this is the guy who's being put he's he's being He's being put forward by Zakir Naik, right? Yeah, yeah. Zakir, oh, yes. Zakir, Zakir Naik's calling him, right? And then you've got Yasser Qadi going on shows with him. You've got all these Muslims going on shows, and, and he's over here, golden showers, golden showers. I mean, <laughs> see, I, I told you I'm not I'm not interested in going after Muhammad Hijab except for in a fun way. But right now, Muslims are locked in. They've got nowhere else to go. They're going to Muhammad Hijab. He's going Muslims, he's going to become your champion. It doesn't matter what he says, and he's proving it right now, right? Um, so I'm not interested in going after him, but you could, you could, in theory, use this against Zakir Naik and as more as yeah. more problems with Yasser Qadi, right? Say, you know, Zakir Naik's new champion talks about, and then you've got, you know, the golden showers and stuff, and say this is the guy that that, that Zakir Naik is is putting is is championing and, and telling to go out and represent Islam. Wow, now we're now we're understanding a lot about about Zakir Naik and what he really thinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is this is so funny. You, you, you see the giant hypocrisy, the giant moral hypocrisy on these people's parts. It's 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 so amazed. No, it's, it's, it's and, and it's it it goes into it goes into them just living these these kind these complete double lives, right? I mean, imagine when when I debated him, he's well, one apart from the issue of him violating every agreement that he made. Uh, and again, they weren't agreements. They weren't my ideas. They weren't my ideas. These are things that the Muslims said. You have to agree to these things. So we agree to them. He breaks all of them. Spends the, you know, spends every time he gets to speak, he he insults me, which I wouldn't. I normally wouldn't care. I wouldn't care at all. I get a, I get insulted all day, every day. I'm kind of used to it, right? But. <laughs> Then when he's one of the times he was speaking, he goes and and we don't insult their gods. I'm thinking, what? That's all you guys do. It's all you you guys literally spend all day every day That's attacking the Trinity and the deity of Christ. 
And so, th but they they want it both ways. They want, hey, you see, we we don't insult other people's religions when that's all they do. That's all the Quran does. But they so they want the the Quran mocks their, their gods. It's <laughs> yeah, they want the reputation of someone who would would be so tolerant that he wouldn't uh, criticize another person's uh, beliefs about God. And yet they still want to mock people's beliefs, right? So they, they want they want it both ways. But it's the same thing with morality, right? We want to be the, the noble pillars of morality, and yet we want to be insulting people in a way that you would you would not expect this from the lowest of the low, right? I mean the worst, nastiest insults you can come up with, these are put forward by the champion. Watch him after this. If if he catches if he catches flack over it, if, if it actually gets back to Zakir Naik and Yasir Kadi and stuff, you're gonna say, Oh, my account was hacked. My account was hacked. It was not me. <laughs> Someone hacked my account and, and posted those comments. No, you know, you know what, you know what. To be very honest, uh, David, <clears throat> Mama Tijab can say the worst things that she, that come to his uh, to his disgusting mind. He can say the worst things. He's still going on, by the way. I, sh I should take. I should people. People should take screenshots screen of these. Shot, all that stuff, Pe yeah. People, everybody, you should screenshot these things and spread them everywhere. This is what Mohammed Hijab is. But he could say, Mohammed Hijab could say the most filthy things that come to his mind and the worst things that come to his mind. And these things could really be issues that the, that the great Muslim apologists, the Muslim scholars, and the most, Muslim, most Muslims in the Muslim community disagree with. He could do the filthiest, most disgusting things. All it would do is that an Islamic scholar would sit down on him and would say, hey, you shouldn't have done that. And Mama Tijab will say, "Yeah, I might have been, I might have overreacted," and that's it. That's all there is to it. And then Mama Tijab will continue representing Islam with his perfectly sublime manners and morals. That's exactly will, what will happen. He will continue destroying Islam without even realizing it. Same thing with <laughs> same thing with your uh, with your buddy um, Daniel. What's his last name? Pikachu. P Pikachu. Daniel. <laughs> Pikachu. Yeah. Yeah, I've only watched I've only watched one of his videos, but it was very interesting. Uh, someone sent it to me and said, "David, could you comment on this because this is amazing stuff here." It's there's, him, there's very good material. You should actually do that. It's him. It's him complaining about how LGBTQ is infiltrating the Muslim community and all the steps <laughs> oh, yeah. they used to do it. But it was like every step he gives is exactly something that Muslim Muslims do, right? So like everything, everything he said. So you have to you have to label anyone who disagrees with you as hate mongers. And that's what the LGBTQ is, is doing. Like what? That's exactly what you guys do. Right. Every single thing he complains about the LGBTQ community is something that has been part of the, you know, the campaign about oh, everything is Islamophobia. Yeah, campaign yeah. you know since the since the 1990s. But um, but yeah, along the same lines. Right. That, that these guys, they have their fans. And he, this is why they'll continue on this path. They have a, a band of very vocal, aggressive supporters who cheer them on. And since since these people cheer them on, they're they're constantly hearing these cheers. Yes, continue at it. Yes, continue telling these men to take their golden showers. Yes. Uh, <laughs> They're cheering them on, and so they're doing it, and they're not realizing that to, now they're they're exposing Islam to the rest of the world. The rest of the world is looking at that and going, whoa, whoa, I had a Muslim neighbor, and my Muslim neighbor was like the nicest, most generous guy I've ever met in my life. So I was thinking that that represents Islam, but you're telling me these guys are actually the representatives of Islam? Oh, my goodness, I've changed my mind about Islam. I need to look into this. Let me look up some videos. Oh, apostate prophet. Let me check out this guy's channel. Yeah. So you're doing us you're doing us all a great favor. Thank you so much, uh, dear dear Mohammed Hijab. You are doing us a fantastic great favor. This is actually much better than <clears throat> than my initial uh, request and what I wanted from you. I wanted um, a debate from you where you could uh, fairly represent your Islamic ideas and beliefs, which you have uh, run from like the big coward that you are. But uh, now you are doing us this favor. Now you are showing uh, this this face to everybody. And all those people who will encounter Muhammad Hijab and associate everything that they have seen tonight with your name will be like, wait, this is the big representative of Islam? This is the guy that everyone tells me to watch? This is the guy that everyone uh, says defeats the, 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 the critics of Islam? This is the guy that I should trust? Someone who goes around and says, oh, give him a golden shower, give him a golden shower, give him a golden shower, go on your knees. That's the guy that I, that I should trust? That, this is the guy I, I should lead I don't me. have time. I don't have time to do an online debate with you, but I can spend an hour and a half talking about golden showers. 
I mean, dude, the level of thinking here, here. Here's what's amazing, right? I need to get screenshots of all this because, again, gosh, I do not want to criticize him, but I do want to expose Islam and expose Islam for producing this. But the comments I got, the comments I get from Muhammad Hijab fans, they're just like this. They're just like he is, right? Yeah. The comments I get from Muhammad Hijab fans, I'll give this brilliant argument in a video. I'll give this awesome, epic, brilliant argument defending some point. And Muhammad Hijab fans will come in there and go, huh, you're posting this after Muhammad Hijab held you down and anally raped you for three hours? Ha, 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 right? And yeah. it's like, yeah. this is how yeah. you guys respond. This is how you respond to, to, to arguments and stuff, right? And then you look, look at who their champion is. So if you kind of put all this together, if you put if you put these together and the kind of comments that you get from Muhammad Hijab fans, and then you put out there that this is a guy that, you know, Yasser Qadi uh, wants to, to, to work with until, you know, Hijab ended his career. But then, you know, Zakir Naik is promoting and so on. You can make some powerful, powerful points about Muhammad and Islam, especially if you tie it to a lot of the things that Muhammad and his companions said, because that was some nasty, disgusting stuff. I just want to I just want to do this very quickly, David, um, just so that everyone else can quickly enjoy a, a brief uh preview of this stuff uh just thought it is it is very bigly on the screen here bigly give me a second here let me let me read this out for you Mohammed hijab with a with a with a check mark that he uh, deserved and got from youtube say, says get on your knees for your master boy Mohammed hijab says go ahead and give david wood what he wants david wood can give you a golden shower <laughs> let him slap your face Get on your knees uh, for David Wood. <laughs> hey, 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 Hijab! Assuming that the that the that the white guy would be the master is uh, frankly kind of racist. Yeah. I understand that you know, where where you come from, Muhammad was a white slave, you know, owner who <laughs> who bought, owned, sold, and traded black African slaves and so on. But um, yeah, it's it, you're, you're being kind of racist here, Hijab. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really it's really being very racist and disgusting of you, Mohammed Hijab. By the way, Mohammed Hijab is a, is a, I would I would go ahead and assume that he's um, simply projecting here, that he's simply, um, you know, his, his mind is, is very much uh, bothered and preoccupied by golden showers and, and uh, men giving each other uh, oral satisfaction uh, so much that he's projecting this and uh, telling us here about it. Uh, I know that I know for a fact that Mohammed Hijab is very much is very strong in terms of projection because Mohammed Hijab just today and many other times told me that I was very depressed and uh, I'm very and, and that I'm nihilistic. I'm at the end of my life. Nothing makes sense to me. I'm very sad. I'm very depressed. It's uh, you can very you can Are very you? Clear, is that clear true? see it in my face. No, you, you can cl very clearly see it in my face, which is why I should commit suicide. By the way, Mohammed Hijab is also the same guy who has uh, recently posted this, which I find. Very strange. Let me show you uh, what he posted here, what he says about, <laughs> about life. Mohammed Hijab, life is all about pain management and then you die. Gosh, <laughs> that's kind of dark. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was in a bad place <laughs> when he when he posted this <laughs> when he posted this I was in a bad place I was in a dark place seriously I was like I, I was I wasn't I wasn't feeling very well <laughs> but he posted this I saw that and I was like man what the hell <laughs> life life is all about pain management and then you get a golden shower and a walk by. what's wrong with it. Guys, if you just guys, if you just tuned in, it is not us talking about this, right? Don't think, oh, if you just if you just clicked on this, you're like, what? He's talking about golden showers? No, hey, Job's talking about golden showers. We're making fun of him for being obsessed with this. How many how many how many comments did he post about the golden shower? We're saying this is disgusting. It's disgusting to hear this stuff, but uh, this is where Islam is heading. I hope. It is so awesome. And you know you know what it is, AP. You know what it is. You, you know as well as I. As Islam grows and expands, as Islam grows and expands, it becomes more aggressive, uh, treats people in a more condescending fashion, right? It becomes, And you've got people like Hijab who think Islam is so big and they're looking at the statistics and, oh, by 2040, by 2050, we're the most powerful force. And therefore, we can start treating these guys like we want to treat them. We can start doing it now. We can start acting like we want to act towards them now. Not realizing too soon, should have waited a couple, should have waited a couple decades should have waited a couple decades because uh, I don't know where till it's done, right? I, 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 I really, I have to say, I have no idea what you just said because I'm still, 
<laughs> I'm I'm still at life is all about payment pain management. That you get a golden shower. <laughs> <laughs> Life is all about pain management. <laughs> then you get down on your knees, not to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but so that your friend can give you golden showers. This is the this is this is the champion of Islam that we're responding to, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god. So go jump oh. off a cliff. Go, and, and and the angel Gabriel will not will not save you. <laughs> what a religion, man. Man, man, man. <laughs> Oh Mister, I, I, Mister, I thought I thought this live stream was going to be us going through all these sources on Muhammad and Me stuff too. like this, all this <laughs> nasty stuff, and we're going to be talking about you know Muhammad covered in semen and having sex with a prepubescent girl and torturing people for money and all this stuff, and and then uh, and then you said, hey, I just hey, hijab just backed out of the debate. Let's talk about hijab. <laughs> yeah, okay, turned out turned out pretty fun. Oh my god, I I can't get over that. Yeah, so yeah. As said, we were going to talk about uh, what, what the hell is happening? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm trying to move stuff around on my desktop. I'm sorry. So we were going, we were really going to sit down today. I thought, hey, I've, I haven't had a chat with David Wood in such a long time. I thought it would be a great pleasure. It would be, it would be fantastic to sit down together to talk about several things that we uh, want to do together in the future that people have asked us about. But most importantly, it would be great to sit down and. Uh, do everyone a favor and quickly go again through all those sources and talk about uh, why Muhammad is so filthy. The Prophet Muhammad, I'm not talking about this filthy Muhammad. I'm talking about the Prophet Muhammad. Why Prophet Muhammad is so has such a wicked morality, all the things that he has done, why you cannot trust him, why Muslims should stop following him and all that stuff. And I was really, it, it was it was tedious work. I thought I would, I'll go to through all these sources. And then Muhammad Hijab makes a Twitter post, announces that he doesn't want to debate me because... Uh, because I didn't tell him that it, the debate was going to be online, although I clearly told him by everybody's, uh, according to numerous witnesses, it's right there just yesterday. So we wanted to talk about this, and here is Mohammed Hijab making a fantastic show in the, in the name of Islam, right? Whoa! Now. Hey, <laughs> what? What if? What if he's not? What if he's not the doofus we think he is? What if he's an undercover genius? Because think about what he just did. We were going to spend a two-hour live stream <laughs> blasting his prophet, making his making fun of his prophet. Oh what if? God. What if he's an undercover genius, came in here and said, I'll kidding? start talking trash, and I'll back out of a debate, and I'll get these guys talking about me in order to protect the honor of, of my prophet? What if he's an undercover genius who just got us to attack him instead of his prophet? Wow. You weren't even ready for that. Wow. Wow. Mohammed Hijab, you're a very smart man. Bravo! If that was your intention, yeah, Mohammed you have, Hijab. <laughs> you have rescued your holy prophet. <laughs> you, have, you have saved your holy prophet from the from, from the tongues, from the from, from, from embarrassment. You have you have done a great work for Islam today. Mohammed Hijab. Thank you so much. I have to applaud your genius here tonight. I didn't see that coming. I really didn't see that coming. Hey, did uh, uh, did you see that? You see the comment from uh, Thomas L. I'm not sure what language this is. L. Oich what? says Muhammad was on his knees for Dihya Kalbi. You familiar with that source? Which Muhammad's source? companion, uh, Dihya Kalbi, Dihya, <laughs> Dihya the dog. Uh huh. Um, there, there's uh, in, in the Muslim sources, in the Muslim sources, people would see. This young hot dude leaving Muhammad's place, and they would ask, uh, "Hey, oh, yeah. what are you doing with uh, Dihya El Kabi coming out your house?" And he said, "No, that was the angel Gabriel, right?" <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, "He said the angel Gabriel looks exactly like Dihya, and so whenever you see the the." <laughs> Whenever you see Dia Kalbi coming out of his house, it's because the angel Gabriel is visiting him. And he just happens to look like this uh, young hot dude. <laughs> oh man! Oh, oh this rel this religion, man. This this religion is crazy. I, I was I, I, I've been thinking for quite a while. It's like when you criticize Islam, or when you talk about Islam, when you defend Islam, even when it's just about defending Islam, when you talk about Islam between people who defend it and people who criticize it, you talk about the most disgusting stuff in the world, <laughs> and it is relevant to the topic of Islam. That's what Islam is. <laughs> you talk about the most disgusting stuff in the world, and that is relevant to Islam. D Islamic apologetics revolve around the most disgusting topics yeah. that, you, that, come, that come to a person's mind. So this is really, this is the reputation of Islam. 
the reputation of Islam is we're talking about child marriage. We're talking about uh, suggestions to, to to other child marriages, to Muhammad uh, have, having semen on his clothes all the time, having 11 wives, being told by his followers that he has the sexual strength of 30 men. Uh, having sex with a with a with a slack slave behind the back of his of his wives, and then legitimizing that with the Quran, uh, apparently meeting with a strange man who he claims is the angel Gabriel at home. Mm. <laughs> and we talk, we're talking about the most disgusting stuff in the world, and it's it, yeah, and, and it's a legitimate and, discussion about Islam. Yeah, and, and the reason <laughs> is, I mean, that that's what the Muslim sources are about. I mean, you could you could you could pull a volume of the Hadith off the wall. And open it up to a random page, and it's either going to be about slaughtering the unbelievers in the name of Allah, mm -hmm. or Aisha scraping the semen off Muhammad's clothes, or Muhammad having sex with nine women and girls in one night, and then only taking one bath. It's going to be about something like that, right? And that's why, mm -hmm. you, you know, if you study Islam, then, gosh, that's what you're dealing with. And if you want to examine the Muslim sources, that's... That's just what you're dealing with. You know, sometimes, sometimes something overcomes me, and I think uh, maybe I feel a little bit bad for this guy called Mohammed Hijab right now. And Mohammed Hijab maybe came here tonight and genuinely thought <laughs> because he was because he was so provoked by my mockery of him and by people calling him a coward, he really came here onto this live chat and to to think you know to, to vent a little bit and to think that he's doing something great, to think that he's coming here to humiliate us. And all and he has done, no matter how you look at it, look at it from whatever perspective you want to look at it, but all he has done is just to completely embarrass himself and Islam. He has done nobody any favors tonight. He's been completely disgusting. He's been completely stupid, idiotic, and he has given us so much material to talk about something so so so, that, so good. Can, can you imagine that though? Can you even imagine Muhammad Hijab coming onto a live stream and completely embarrassing himself <laughs> <laughs> and his religion? <laughs> oh wow! I, I, couldn't, uh, have, I couldn't see that coming. It's got deja vu, man. Hey, hey, you, you remember this? Guys, did, did you see did you see that interview? You had Muhammad Hijab. So confu so confused. And we've seen the hijab clips. We've seen the hijab clips where he's uh going to scholars who are telling him, no, the differences in the Quran are just accents. They're just different accents, right? And uh so he gets he finally gets Sheikh Yasser Qadi talking about this. And man, Yasser Qadi can can set this record straight because all these Christians and atheists are saying that there are these different Qurans in different parts of the world and that uh, different Muslims in different areas have different versions of the Quran. But finally, the great Yasser Qadi will, <laughs> will correct this. And then it's one epic train wreck, the entire thing, just completely destroying the foundations of Islam. And then Hijab tries to salvage it at the end. He said, but, you know, if I gave you a blank Mus'haf, you could you could put together the Quran, right? Yasser got it. Nope, nope, no. <laughs> could not be done. <laughs> Cannot happen. Sorry. End of end of end of Yasser Qadi's career. All thanks to. Hey, I don't know if you I don't know if you saw this, but it wasn't just his job. It was also Farid responds. Did you see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I've only I've only watched one for read response video. I think I think I've only watched one for read response video, ever. But uh, someone sent me a link to a Muslim who's blasting for read for being the one who initially leaked. Who initially leaked? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the the comments of of Yasser Qadi. And so, guys, think about this situation. You have Yasser Qadi. You have Yasser Qadi. That that it was respected around the world was respected around the world as a muslim scholar right and then but behind the scenes behind the scenes he's saying i have some doubts about whether the theories that muslims have that muslim scholars have about the ahruf and kirat i don't think that these can actually stand up to critical scrutiny mm -hmm. without us just being you know just agreeing with them because we're Muslims, right? If we were to actually subject them to critical scrutiny, according to our own sources, our theories cannot stand up to scrutiny, and I'm, I'm concerned about that. And then they start, and then Farid, ah, I'm exposing this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he shares the emails. And then because this becomes an issue, Muhammad Hijab is dumb enough to think that Yasser Qadi is going to come in there and fix all this and say, oh, no, let me explain what this really is. And of course, the Quran's been perfectly preserved right down to the letter. I only meant that, you know, I'm concerned about different accents, right? He thinks he's going to say something like that and completely destroys it. And so, guys, th this goes back to what I said much earlier here. 
these young, aggressive Muslims who do not, who, who, who lack the maturity of their older counterparts who've been through this for many, many years, the, when these guys get big followings, they, they'll, they'll destroy their religion. They, they will they not be able say. to handle it. See, see I got say. a big following. I have a big following online. I got that after doing some of the most horrible things a person has ever done, spending years in jails and prisons. So, so by the time I get a big following, I'm pretty convinced <laughs> that I was one of the most horrible people who's ever walked the planet, mm -hmm. and yet I'm given a second chance. So that comes with a degree of wisdom thinking, hey, I have a bunch of followers. That's not because of how, how great I am. Because I've seen how how screwed up I am, so don't do not take this sort of stuff for granted, right? Whereas these young guys coming in, all of a sudden they're getting, you know, whatever it is, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of of fans and views, and they're already arrogant and they're already uh, narcissists and so on. And then their religion amplifies it. It tells them to be aggressive. It tells them to be like this. And then they get this crowd cheering them on. These guys will annihilate all the foundations of their religion. Single-handedly, we can sit back and watch. We can retire, AP. We can retire, sit yep. back and watch these guys annihilate their religion. But it, 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 it might be. On the other hand, it might be good for us to keep provoking them because that, uh, that does make them, you know, go on, go I on mean, these sprees. I mean, Farid is one of those young people who made a who who started his YouTube channel just without the sole aim of refuting my videos. That's what he started out with. He created the YouTube channel. He he said it very clearly. He said that he only started this because he wanted to refute me and my videos because my 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 channel was getting too popular and he couldn't handle it and nobody else was doing it he, and he even went out after he was done after he made 50 videos about me of which i watched like 10 or so i don't know he went out and said uh, i'm sorry everybody unfortunately uh, apostate prophet has grown too much and i i was too late he made such a video such a stream he says i'm very sorry i apologize i did i did my i did the best i can and the best he could do was bring such stupid arguments like saying uh well people didn't witness the moon splitting in two because people were asleep at night and it was a seven century <laughs> which i want to make a video about very soon so th th these young muslim <clears throat> apologists are really they're not they're not doing islam any favor they're doing us big favors the other guy daniel kikachu comes here and says uh, i don't know if you have seen that he said something like uh something along the lines of i asked them do you think is slavery good do you think slavery is morally ac acceptable and he said yes yes i don't think slavery is morally wrong and I said, I asked him to explain. He explained it like for, for 10 minutes. And you know what, what it came down to, what it broke down to? He said, <laughs> he said, slavery is essentially the same as capitalism, as employment, but it is actually better than employment because think about it. He said, think about it. You have a, if, if you get a car, uh, buying a car is better than renting a car because if you rent a car, then uh, it is not yours and you don't take very good care of it. But I if agree. You, but or, if you buy a or car. Or a toaster. Or a toaster. <laughs> right? It's like buying a toaster. Yeah, buy, like a toaster. Or if, if you buy a toaster, then you take then you take very good care of it. If you if you rent it, then you don't take care of it. Which, by the way, says a lot about his morality. I take much better care of something that I that I rent than about something that I that I own because I respect mm -hmm. the person who actually owns this thing, whom I whom I have to return this stuff to. So that says a lot about Daniel Kikuchu actually. But his logic was: it's better to own a car than to rent a car because you will treat the car better. And capitalism means own, means renting a person, while slavery means owning a person. If you own the person rather than rather than rent the person, then you will take better care of the person, which means slavery is better fundamentally. That is <laughs> that is the argument. And here is Mohammed Hijab talking about golden showers. So this is <laughs> this is really what's going on. You know, you know what you know what I what I find fantastic. Um, we'll we'll probably sit down in the future and say, hey David, do you remember that one night where? Muhammad Hijab was spamming the, the comment section. Oh yeah, this is classic. This is fun. This is a this is a fun. This is good comic relief, I think. Yeah, this is a story for the future. This is a story for for speaking presentations, right? This is yeah. this is all right. Here's my PowerPoint presentation on the true spirit of Islam, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Golden check out these shower. comments. This comes from a, from one of the most popular Muslim apologists in the world. <laughs> David, do you um, remember that night where Muhammad Hijab was telling us to give each other a golden shower? <laughs> wow, oh my God. Muhammad, Muhammad, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, what uh, he produced, man. Yeah. Um, uh, quick comment right here: the Wawi, the Wawi. If you're you're still listening, the Wawi said, uh, "I want to have a respectable discussion. Don't call me coward. I'm a man of respect." He's responding to someone else. Apparently, someone called him a coward or something like this. Uh, the Wawi. I'm assuming you're the same person who uh, sent me an email earlier. 
Um, just do something. Do something for me. Uh, test your internet connection, right? Test your internet connection. So go to Google, type in speed test on Google, speed test, run the test, and then email me those two numbers because uh, uh, that'll help me assess how good your internet will be for live streaming. But send me that. And yeah, we can we can definitely set something up. Awesome. I want to go to through some comments and some super chats if you... Uh... If sure, sure, sure. We, yeah, we, I, I don't, I don't want to let those slide. I always want to catch those super chats and it, uh, respond to them. Uh, Egal O became a member of the channel, became a prophet of the channel. You can uh, go down, by the way, if you want to become a member of the channel, uh, which is also called a prophet. Uh, you can go down and press the join button. Egal O just became a member of the channel and also officially a prophet, which is, of course, amazing. Thank you so much and welcome. Hindu historian made a super chat and didn't add any comments. Thank you so much, Hindu historian. I appreciate it. Dr. Lingui Art made a super sticker and which says vibes and didn't add any comments to it. Thank you so much, Dr. Lingui Art. I appreciate it. Hindu historian made another super chat, uh, another super sticker with a vomiting face. I guess that's in reference to the very uh, morally sublime Muhammad Hijab and his golden shower requests. <laughs> Apple Goo made a super sticker. Uh, and said thanks. Thank you so much, Apple Goo. I appreciate it. Andra Klein made a super chat and said, "Joining five dollar tier Patreon. Keep up with the great work, guys." By the way, I want to have a Patreon uh, Zoom event very soon, where where people who support me on Patreon, where we all can come together and have a chat. I will announce that further. Uh, we should we should we should do a uh, since we have some overlap. We should in, do it together, uh, yeah. in supporter base, we should uh, we should do one this month where yeah we get everyone together from both both our channels and we hang out with everybody. That'd be great, yeah. Uh, that'd be fantastic. If everybody, if you want to join that, we will probably organize that very soon. Although we are not the best, David David Wood is the best of planners. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> Oracle of Twilight made a super chat and said, "Mohammed Hijab doesn't deserve a debate at this point. He's a clown and deceptive, like a charlatan. I know, but he never he never deserves a debate. Mohammed Hijab was always a clown and always deceptive, and he was always a charlatan. But I I thought I just really think that a debate would be very great to expose how uh, how how fragile his uh, belief really is, and he knows that very well, which is why he did everything <clears throat> in his in his in his hands in his hands to run from that and then request golden showers live on my super on my on my on my stream. Oh, yeah. And I mean, uh, along those lines, I mean, guys, think about it, right? I mean, you had two Christians, me and Sam Shamoon, inviting. We invited 1.6 billion Muslims. We said everyone, everyone, greatest, greatest to smallest, welcome to come on and defend your prophet. We did get some people uh, on there, and, and there, there, there are more. But, I mean, you, you think all of these apologists, all of these debaters, all of these scholars, you know that 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 people are going to watch, that there's a lot of Christians watching, there's a lot of atheists watching, there's Hindus watching. Why would you not want to go on there and defend what should be, for you, one of the, the two most important topics you could address, whether the Quran's the word of God and or when, whether Muhammad's a prophet? Why would you not want to? And they just do not want to go near any sort of debate about their prophet. It is hard to set up debates about Muhammad. They don't want to touch it, man. Mm -hmm. They don't want to touch it. And, it, and you know, I kind of sympathize because I don't want to touch that either. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nasty dude, man. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Oh, God. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Oracle of Twilight made a super chat and said, oh, that's, that's the same. Thank you, uh, Oracle of Twilight. Islam Critique. Islam Critique is here. Shout out to Islam Critique, who has a fantastic channel on uh, debunking Islam, although it's not as good as uh, Dave, as my channel. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Islam Critique is here, made a super chat and said, if Muhammad Hijab can make Yasser Qadi a laughing stock, imagine what he can do to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if Muhammad Hijab... Will destroy his own skull <laughs> without even trying. Imagine what he would do to you if he were trying. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Brilliantly summarized. Islam critique. Thank you so much. Hijab could do that. He could walk around like that. He called you Christians want to mess with me? I take out my own I'll take out my own scholars because I'm crazy. I'll take out my own scholars. I'll destroy my own religion. I don't care because I'm crazy. You want to mess with me? I didn't think so. The golden show yeah. boy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Apple Goo made another super chat. Apple Goo made a super sticker unboxing. Thank you so much. Search for Truth said in a super chat, Hijab, when I spit, does that make me a god? 
Uh, is that in reference to something? I don't get it. <laughs> oh, don't uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I remember this. Uh, vaguely, vaguely, <clears throat> vaguely. So during the debate, I pointed out that Muhammad's follower, th uh, this goes back to, to Muhammad Hijab, basically completely misrepresenting the audience, but, but, but I mean, misrepresenting the argument, but pretending for the audience that he's refuted it. So um, I pointed out that Muhammad's followers would take his saliva and even his blood and they would take his saliva and they would rub it on themselves and stuff and they would take his blood and they would they would drink it and stuff like that and I, I my point was this is not how you treat a mere human being if you're drinking muhammad's urine and rubbing his saliva all over you this is a kind of reverence that is simply idolatrous so that was my point and then hijab said something like what what, because Muhammad's stupid? He, I mean, because Muhammad spits? He's God? This makes him God? Puh, puh, puh. Oh, is that God? Right? So he, <laughs> right where, and then, of course, the audience, ha, 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 great point, Hijab. Didn't understand yeah. anything, but you don't have to. <laughs> <since> you're crap. <laughs> uh, wait, I'm, le I'm leaving a comment. Muhammad Hijab is afraid of debating whether Islam is true, but if you need a golden shower, go to Muhammad Hijab. Uh... <laughs> Okay, search for truth. Thank you so much for the for the for the, for the input. Andrew Martin made a become became a member of the channel. Thank you so much. Welcome, Andrew Martin. Uh, this is the, this is a giant mess of a of a of a live stream right now. I didn't expect it to go like this at all, but uh, we will hopefully interact much more in other live streams together. Ron M made a super chat and said Sam Shimon would wipe the floor with Mimi Hijab, and Mimi knows that and would never debate him. <laughs> that would that would be that would be a massacre. Um, it would be. Basically, Z Zucker Nike. Zucker Nike is good at one thing. He, when he was younger, he memorized tons of references, right? He memorized tons of references. So he's good at firing off references. Other than that, his arguments, he, the things he says are the stupidest things anyone could possibly say. Sam Shamoon has an even greater reference recall than Zucker Nike, but Sam Shamoon makes devastating arguments. And he's, yeah, I, I believe Sam Shamoon would crush any of these guys or all of them at once, right? In other words, if you put Zakir Naik and Shabir Ali and Muhammad Hijab and 10 others on stage, I, I believe Sam would crush all of them at the same time. I, and uh, they, they, they can prove me wrong. They, they're welcome to prove me wrong. We go live and Sam Shimon's sitting right there. And if someone, con if someone calls in and it starts looking like a debate, if it's a discussion, me and Sam will both talk. If it starts looking like a debate, I kind of draw back and uh, go into moderator, moderator mode. But, uh, no, I mean any anyone who wants to who wants to refute Sam, it's uh keeping. Oh, by, by the way, so last last week we did Muhammad Week, and that's still continuing because we have some Muslims that we did you know still want to talk. But uh, after we next week, we're probably going to start the Quran confirms the Bible week, where Muslims can call in and show us that the Quran does not confirm the Bible, or that the Quran shows that the Bible's been corrupted. And then probably later in the month we'll have Trinity Week where Muslims can call in and give us all their objections against the doctrine of the Trinity. So <clears throat> plenty coming up, plenty of plenty of opportunities. To, that's uh, amazing that you're going through all that stuff. That's awesome. Mm. I, I, well, I've I, been thinking about doing such doing such events for quite a while. I thought I thought it would just be a, a, a kind of a random night where people call in and uh, discuss stuff with me like Muslims. But that, that's a whole different level. That's actually awesome. You, 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 might, you might want to actually do that. And uh, you could either do it by yourself or you get a friend. And then, you know, you could have a couple, you know, one Muslim or a couple Muslims call in and, and basically have a conversation. But you can kind of discuss the same points. And it's, it's actually pretty cool. I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, views and stuff like that in that just the discussions we had a couple, a couple days ago, we had a discussion with a, a young guy who converted to Islam um, it's got over 70,000 views, which, you know, for, for a live stream, for a live stream, that's good for a live stream. That's only been up a couple, a couple mm -hmm. days. So it's going to, you know, in the next couple of days, it'll hit a hundred thousand stuff, but you know, that's a lot for, for, uh, it's a lot of people who are, who are interested in watching a conversation who might not be interested in watching just a regular video or something like that. I wonder, I wonder what Ali Dawa is doing right now. Ali Dawa is probably watching all of this happen and he's like, Muhammad, brother Muhammad, please stop. Please stop. You're embarrassing all of us. You're embarrassing yourself. Me refute them. Me refute them. I me say golden shower. Golden shower. Golden shower. Destroy them. Boys. Boy. Golden shower. Musaf. Light Musaf. 
You get me a black Musaf, I will. I will give you a Quran. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, moving on. <clears throat> ben Kelly made a super chat and said, Urgent message to David Wood. Research General Butt Naked, prophet of Nyan Bayawi. Then converted oh, I know, to. I know General Butt Naked. <laughs> it's so funny. Do you know that guy? No, what is that? He's, uh, I forget where it was. D does the comment say where he was? Uh, prophet it's of Nyan Bayawi. What is his name? What? Is yeah, it, it's, a, it it's right an spell? African country, but this dude was into all sorts of like demonic pagan stuff he would drink this stuff and he said that it made him invisible in Liberia. battle but he would he would run out into battle at the head of his army butt naked <laughs> <laughs> just slaughtering people left and right Man. and he got the name general butt naked then he converted to christianity and now he's like an evangelist <laughs> <laughs> really? this is a uh, it's a wild dude but anyone named uh i i i, I I, I read about General Butt Naked in an article. It was like the ten, the ten most epic redemption stories of all time of people who are like just completely messed up in one direction and then just did a just did a total one eighty and came back. But uh, but I, to, I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't checking that out to make a video about it. But it would make a cool video. Who's not going to click on a video titled "General Butt Naked"? <laughs> But naked. You should do that, right? You should do that. Click on that, right? <laughs> what's cool is, what's cool is, you might end up with people who are they're looking for porn, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, look up for porn, butt naked, and then they end up watching a video, and then it's got a cool, you know, cool message, you know, about how people can turn around their lives. And then they become Christians, and then they stop watching porn. Yeah. That's right. See, see, it works. <laughs> uh, somebody said, um, "AP, your live streams are so good that Muhammad Hijab is having sexual fantasies." <laughs> It, it is weird to bring this stuff up, right? I mean, if you wanted, if you wanted to call people idiots or something like that, then just say, "Oh, you're idiots" or something like that. But to immediately go the route of sexual perversion in every in every discussion is uh, that shows there's a kind of underlying sickness there. I, I really, I really, I really want this to be a good opportunity for everybody. Use this opportunity. You should remember Muhammad Hijab from now on as the, the the golden shower man or the golden shower boy or Muhammad golden shower hijab. Whatever you want to do, just take these screenshots, make make memes of him, make make images of him, make pictures of him, hang them up, do whatever you want. But don't miss this opportunity. He has made a complete idiot of himself. You could uh you could do something with your merch line. Oh, <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> oh man, I'm laughing too much. Uh, one Colossians one seventeen made a super chat and said, uh, first Colossians, is that, is that how you say it? Uh, said, David, remember him who said Allah has parts. Is that, is that something that happened during the debate too? Um, what is that? Uh, I'm not sure what that's in reference to. Now I, I can think of multiple things that that would be in reference uh -huh, to. Uh -huh. Allah has parts. <laughs> Someone, um, someone asked, uh, John Beaver said, are we sure this Muhammad Hijab is not a cloned account? No, we are sure this is his, uh, check mark. it has, it's, it has the check mark on it. You cannot, uh, you cannot copy and paste that. Uh, and if you go on his profile through the live chat, you actually land on his channel and see all his uh, videos. So this is really, there is absolutely no doubt. This is legitimate, leg legitimately, uh, Muhammad Hijab. Uh, all right. Skull super made a super chat and said, Hijab is Shamsi's boyfriend. <laughs> Stefan Milevich said, uh, Muhammad Hijab, you're an animal. I was like you when I was 15 years old, but some people never grow up. <laughs> Thank you, Stefan. Thank you. That's exactly what I was telling, what I was saying uh, an hour ago. Carol Elisua made a super chat and said, Muhammad Hijab is basically giving away his sex life. You tell me where he gets those ideas from. I don't know what he's watching at home. Well, while he's talking about how life is all about, uh, all about pain and then you die, He's watching golden showers. That's what that's what's happening in Muhammad Hijab's uh, sad place. AS, but thank you, Carol. AS made a super chat and said, Hijab and Yasir Qadi is watching every bit of y'all's live video to find something to mock you. Good luck and keep watching. <laughs> I don't think Yasir Qadi is watching, to be honest. Yasir Qadi uh, embarrassed himself <laughs> enough on Muhammad Hijab's channel. I don't think he has the, mm. you know, he, he, he doesn't want to go out there anymore. But he as does, you can all see... He, he he trolls my videos occasionally because he, he, uh, he, yeah, he, uh, <laughs> yeah, he got me, uh, he got YouTube to review to re to remove one of my videos, and then I got restored. But 
Yep. Yeah. So he, he was checking out my channel. Amazing. Amazing. So Yasser Kadi is watching David Wood's videos and Mohammed Hijab is watching our live chat and talking about golden showers and oral here, sex. Here, here's, here's, here's what's interesting, though. Um, Yasser Kadi, going back to his uh, epic, <laughs> epic interview with Mohammed Hijab that is going to go down in history as one of the great moments in the history of the destruction of the ideology of Islam. Um, what he was saying in there was, when he's talking about his the red line and he said you know we're muslim so we see an issue and then we push a little bit and then we get an answer well, okay okay that's good that's that's good he goes he goes the non-muslims the non-muslim scholars they don't they don't have that red line that we have right we go oh okay any answer yeah any answer so any answer is fine oh okay oh the ahruf are just dialects oh the the differences in the manuscripts are just different accents right okay that that's got and then and then i'll push right but he says that he says the non-Muslims will push. The non-Muslims will go. What? What are you talking about? It's not. It's, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense that it's dialects, right? And he specifically said that. And you know they're right because they're quoting your sources to you. You know they're right, right? Yeah, right. And he said he specifically compared it to the story of the emperor's new clothes. It's like the emperor's new clothes. They say you're not wearing any clothes, right? So notice, Islam is the naked king who doesn't realize that he's mm -hmm. naked, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. That's what Islam is, according to Yasser Qadi. And it's the, the Western scholars are the ones who are pointing out, you guys are naked. You have nothing. You're butt naked. You're like general butt naked. Right? So, <laughs> so that, that's what it's like. But it, it, it's the same situation here. So, so here's, this, here's, here's what's interesting. Yasser Qadi is, at least to an extent, teachable. If he's acknowledging that, hey, we can believe certain things as Muslims, but then these, these Western academics will come in and point out, that doesn't actually work. It doesn't work according to your own sources. Stop saying that. He's acknowledging that. He's pointing that out to to even to Muslims. So there's hope for Yasser Qadi. Hopefully he, he kind of explained a... that uh, that uh, the Oriental Islamic scholars can just uh, move on with these things and make their and make their excuses. But with the Western scholars, Western scholars are uh, confronted with non-Muslims with non-Muslim opponents all the time and have to deal with these hard, tough questions, which is why they cannot just brush, brush these things off. That was kind of the the message about it, right? Yeah, and so and so, guys, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you an e I'll give you a simple simple example. So this is this isn't even at the scholarly level. This is just at the intro level, right? Almost every Muslim when he when he hears about the ahruf, he hears oh you know that's just the seven dialects. That's just the seven different Arabic dialects. And the Quran was revealed in these seven different dialects to make the Quran easier for the people who spoke these different dialects. Well. Two, two basic problems, like fundamental, like the scholars will go into far more detail. I'm just going to give you two quick, easy ones just to show you how the main theory that Muslims are given doesn't even survive like like two minutes of investigation. Right? So problem number one, the guy that that this is that this story is about, that this hadith is about converted around the time of the conquest of Mecca. So that's 630. Right. And the story, the hadith, is about this dude. He's reciting the Quran in the mosque, but he's reciting it in a different way from what Umar was familiar with. So Umar hears this guy reciting the Quran, and he hears him reciting it in a different way. So he drags the guy to Muhammad like a dog, like I'm about to put this guy to death, right? Brings him to Muhammad, and Muhammad says, uh, hey, uh, how do you recite it? And the guy recites it. And then he goes, Umar, how do you recite it? Umar recites it. And he goes, Allah revealed it in both ways. Yeah, Allah revealed it in seven different ways, seven ahruf, mm -hmm. right? And Muslims today say, oh, yeah, that's seven dialects. But but think about this. So the, the first, the, the, obvious, the obvious problem here. So this guy that this story is about converted in 630 A.D., when is he reciting, when is he doing this rec Quran recitation? Let's say a year later, right? 631. Notice, you only have two years to work yeah, with. Yeah. You have from 630 to 632. So, then Muhammad says, no, 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 see, don't, don't, you know, don't worry about it, Umar. The Quran is revealed in seven different ways. Now, think about this, ladies and gentlemen. You're talking 631, if not 632, but it's shortly before Muhammad's death. And all of a sudden... All of a sudden, he announces that he's been revealing the Quran in seven different versions mm -hmm. <laughs> for different people, and no one's ever heard about this before. No one's, no one has a clue. That hasn't been discussed the, ever. The Quran is coming to an end, and Umar's ready to kill this dude <laughs> because he's reciting the Quran differently. And Muhammad never thought to mention, oh, by the way, I'm revealing the Quran in all these different ways. Here's the point. 
that story, your, your interpretation of that story sounds absolutely ridiculous unless you have some red line where you say, oh, can you tell me what the Ahruf are? I've heard that there were these different, oh, it's just dialects, no problem there, unless you're like that, right? As soon as you start pushing on that at all, that falls apart. That's problem number one. Problem number two, <laughs> this guy's from the same tribe as Muhammad and Umar. Yeah. He spoke the same dialect as Muhammad and Umar. The guy is actually, Hisham is actually Khadija's grandnephew. They're all, they're from the same tribe. So your theory that this, oh, it, it just refers to different dialects. Our knowledge of the story about the seven Ahruf is from this story. And whatever the Ahruf are, this dude was taught a different, uh, this this dude was taught a different harf from the one that Umar was taught. If you say it's dialects, it makes absolutely no sense because they spoke the same dialect. Why would why would Muhammad be teaching uh, be teaching someone from his tribe a Yemeni dialect or something? It doesn't make any sense. It's it's completely irrational to claim that this is what it means. And yet every Muslim who's told about what the Ahruf are, if he finds out. I mean, if you don't know what it's about, they'll keep you in a state mm -hmm. of ignorance. If you find out about it, then they want to explain it. Oh, you're you're worried about these seven different ways. Oh, yeah, it's just seven different dialects. Any way, to, here, the, here's the point again. To any non-Muslim who doesn't have that red line where, oh, just ask and then do not question, do not question your answer, this story sounds like, it sounds, your interpretation, your understanding, oh, Ahruf are just different dialects, sounds completely ridiculous. And Yasser Qadi's been dealing with that for years, but not just on those kind of big issues, on these little details. And he know he's going to the conferences. They're exposing, they're exposing these Muslim theories and these Muslim explanations. And he realizes we got nothing here. We, we can't we can't account for this. Now notice the the correct understanding of all this is to just drop drop this issue of perfect preservation and understand that you're dealing with a great big mess and you can't make sense of it. That's what you do. But if you're, you, if you're Yasser Qadi and you don't want to do that, you don't want to just say, guys, we can't make sense of this. We're stuck. We got a problem uh -huh. here. You don't want to do that. You just keep, uh, you just, oh, nope, there, there's got to be an answer out there somewhere. No one's figured it out for 14 centuries. No one's been able to come up with the answer. But I'm Yasser Qadi. If I keep pushing hard enough, I'll figure it out. Yep, yep. I listened to you. <laughs> I, was just, I was just busy going through the whole stuff. But yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the crux of the story. I, I I still need to I still need to really make a thing on that. I need to uh, talk about that. I need to make a video about that stuff. I haven't really uh, kept up with the whole mess that is going on. I was looking at the at the at the whole controversy, and I thought Yasser Qadi is doing a good job enough to <laughs> to destroy Islam single handedly. He doesn't need yeah. to to weigh in. We're, we're we're obsolete, dude. If Muhammad had job. <laughs> if Muhammad had job, and Yasser Qadi. Single-handedly annihilating the religion. What 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 are we gonna do, man? I know, I know. Who who are we? I mean, I I really I'm really coming out here. You are coming out here. We are the enemies of Islam. We are really wanting to 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 do harm to Islam. We want to demolish it, destroy it. We want to we we want Islam to lose credibility. This is this is all all in the in the best interest of everything that we are doing and of humanity. But it's not us who are achieving this. It is the Islamic scholar and the Islamic apologist themselves coming together. This 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 goes right back to Hijab, man. Again, he could come right to us right now and said, "You guys think you're good? I destroy Islam better without even trying than you. All you guys put together. Look at how much damage I've done to the Quran. You guys haven't taken out a scholar. I took out. I take out my own <laughs> scholars. You guys realize who you're yeah, dealing yeah, with? Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? Okay, let me go through the through the, through the super chats. I think we we're, we're we're way over the. I, we've talked quite a while. Uh, I will quickly go through the super chats just because I don't want them to to just I just just because I don't want them to go away. Uh, I will quickly read them through. I will hopefully reply in more detail some other time, or we can reply to something that we really think is very important. Uh, but thanks for all the super chats, everybody. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Hijab and Yasser Qadi watch every da -da 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 -da. Sophia film said Muhammad Hijab can't control himself. Keep going, boy. Save and tweet his comments to every Muslim apologist. You're done, Hijab. <laughs> awesome. AS said in a super chat, guys, make sure to abrogate this video before the Islam warriors download it. <laughs> 12BKL My Shoe made a super chat and said, Can we get a greatest hits of hijab from this video's chat feed? I think it would be an amazing That's actually a great video idea. I will make a I will make a video of if you if you combine the the comments from this chat with some of the some of his recent comments to yeah, you, yeah. and you get that, and you make it like a three minute 
very quickly, easily shareable video, um, which where people could be could be uh, posting it on Twitter and stuff like that. That would that would uh, that would be fantastic. That would do well. I will make a short again. I I'm make a short video at best moments of or best comments of Mohammed Hijab, and I will just post that so that it, it make it look like it's a uh, pro Mohammed Hijab, so that all the uh, Mohammed Hijab minions also come in and have a look at it, and then we can all share that uh, on the internet. It'll be great. Ah. Muhammad Hijab destroys apostate prophet <laughs> and David Wood at the same time. <laughs> Golden shower boy. Um, Dragonfist said, Dragonfist 900 made a super chat and said, Hey David, I have a Muslim friend who I really want to see come to Christ. Should I recommend seeking Allah, finding Jesus to him? What's your quick answer, David? Of course. Of course. Awesome. Yes. Thank you, Dragonfist 900. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Joe Mama made a super chat and said uh, to Muhammad Hijab, can you call CP and not mute him for the sake of Allah? He's converting Muslims left and right. If not, send your best man. BMW 635 CSI made a super chat and said Islam started as something strange and would again re again revert of being strange just as it started. That's a hadith by Muhammad and would recede between the two mosques just as the serpent crawls back in its hole. Sahih Muslim 146. Um, yeah, that's an actual hadith by, by Muhammad, uh, one that I learned very intensively as I was growing up because we learned that, that, that my group and people like us were these were some of the strangers of the end. It's very strange what Islam really teaches here. Satu Jamsaja made a super, super sticker. Thank you so much. Bank Raka made a super chat and said, Muhammad, why abrogate the Yasir Qadi video? Please make a compilation of all Muhammad's, Muhammad Hijab's, of all Muhammad's comments. David and AP, keep up the awesome work. Um, what's that? <laughs> That's a hijab emoji. Hijab is a boy. <laughs> Sorry, my voice is... <clears throat> cracking sophia films uh made a super chat and said i thought islam was about best of speech and manners obviously it's not stefan milayevich made a super chat and said apostate prophet please do not forget emmer stein center you must do a parody video on them i'm begging you that is oh. the worst evil that exists hey you're get, you're getting requests for that too well, we, me and sam have been getting requests for that as well i will i will do that it's it's really Ooh. i think it's one of the, the most disgusting forms of spreading islam they are like presenting it as something very very sweet while you know, you know what I mean. We'll go into that. Maybe uh, because it, it, I'm kind of in a situation where I don't know how much time I want to dedicate to that. But they and and it's it's something that you could get on top of because they don't have a ton of videos, right? I forget what they have. They have like ten or twelve. Yeah, the, they have like ten or twelve you. videos. It's not it's it's not a ton. Maybe maybe like me, you, maybe Sam Shimon should just go live once per week, and we'll just go through one video. At a time, cool. and post it as a response to that. But we can uh, we can go through sources and stuff like that, show how dumb it is, and uh, then put it out there as, and then everyone has the response to the video. I wanted to make a video recently in, in response because there is this thing. There is this this guy, uh, Craig Considine, who is also oh, yeah. there on Emerson Center. He and he's he's really he's really a different story. That guy, but um, he has a video on there which uh, is titled something like. Uh, Prophet Muhammad was the first anti-racist. <laughs> no, he's a moron. We we, uh, we we did we did a show. This is back when we did our show called Jesus or Muhammad. So this is like got to be like 2011, 2012, something right. like that. But it's me, I think Pastor Joseph and Robert Spencer, and I was dressed up like George Washington because the article we were discussing was by Craig Considine saying that Muhammad is basically the Arab George Washington. And he's drawing all these parallels between <laughs> Muhammad and George Washington. But that's what this dude does, right? He comes up with these absurd parallels uh, meant for Westerners. And then it's just, you can get you get popular like that, ladies and gentlemen. That's ridiculous. Right, th right now, that's what right he's now doing. You, yeah. It, right it now, is... you could say... You could say, "Hey, you know, I'm a. I have a background in. I think he's a sociology or something like that. But I, I have a background. Let's say you're. A, let's say you have a background in history and you want to get quickly famous, or you have a background in science. You want to get quickly famous. All you have to do, all you have to do to be set for life right now is say, you know what? I have a background in history, and after examining history, I've concluded that Islam is the best historical religion in history, and Muhammad is the is the clearest, uh, greatest man who ever lived. And you're you're set. You're set for life." It is ridiculous. He makes oh, yeah. like these. He makes these daily posts, these daily tweets, and 
<clears throat> whenever I see them, it looks like someone in some Muslim imam in Pakistan is, is writing those tweets for him and posting him in his name. That's that's what it looks like. He's like he's pretending to be this uh, this this good Christian guy who really sympathizes with Muhammad and loves Islam. And I, I don't know. He, he attends uh, events that are organized by. By, by by Middle Eastern governments, and it just looks so very clearly to me like this guy is being you know hired and paid by by by, by Middle Eastern governments in order to uh, to to sweet talk and, and and propagate Islam. And he's clearly not doing a great job because his audience is just Muslims who would basically hear the same thing normally from Muslim imams. Mm -hmm. Hindu historian made a super chat and said, "Oh, he didn't make a super chat. He made a super sticker which said Game Over.'" Thank you, Hindu historian. AS made a super chat and said, "Mimi is here to get subscribers, bro. At least do something to save your holy Hurian." <laughs> Sophia Films made a super chat and said, "Weak chin hijab got smashed by a pensioner." LOL. Uh, I, I bet that was a fight. That there is there is some video about Mohammed hijab being in a physical fight or something. Sophia Films also said, "Muslims hijab is your intellectual powerhouse." LOL. Hindu historian made a super chat and said, the supreme favors the just, the supreme favors our side. Is, is this like a, is this like a, like a, like a divine, holy uh, reference? Because, uh, hmm. yeah, <laughs> okay. it's probably, a Hindu, it's probably a Hindu belief. Okay. Okay. I see that. I appreciate that Hindu historian. Thank you so much. Um, I, I believe it's the universe. I, I don't, don't take me seriously. Um, <clears throat> Bella Zamamasita made a super sticker and said, wow. Sophia Films made a super chat and said, don't fall for it. Hijab prefers Arab supremacy. Nataverse said, okay, so I will definitely be making a golden ape graphic soon. <laughs> Thanks for the tagline for the graphic, David. I said grape ape. Yeah, gra grape ape. Yeah, that's what he said. You don't, you, yeah, you don't have to make a graphic for that. You just look up grape ape and beagly beagly and uh, you'll see. <laughs> You'll see why you'll see why back in the day we would refer to any giant person as a great ape, but uh -huh. yeah, we would have definitely referred to Muhammad as great. I mean, Muhammad yeah, hijab yeah. as great ape back in the yeah, day. Yeah. Um, Sophia Film said, "Everyone with hijab screenshots post on Nada's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, on Nada's channel." I don't know, something's going on there. <laughs> But thanks, guys. Sydney B made a super chat and said, "Y'all have better integrity and honor than these Muslims. We love you guys. Thank you so much, Sydney. I appreciate that very much." Dragonfist nine hundred said, "Watching them destroy the foundations of Islam. You want me to bring popcorn and a beanbag chair?" <laughs> Sophia Films made thousands of super chats. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, Islam couldn't teach hijab manners nor self control. Thank you so much. And Shimon will make hijab his female dog. Uh, it's not not something that I said. <laughs> Arash Dibazar Jr. said Muhammad Hijab exposed Yasir Qadi respect Hawaiian CC said is Muhammad Hijab a top or a power bottom please clarify at the debate Sid Dave said uh, Khadija gave golden showers to Muhammad <laughs> do, Muhammad Hijab do you see do you, do you see what you have caused yeah there, were, there would have been none of this <laughs> This wouldn't have been a discussion. Now we have to sit here and listen to this, not just from hijab, but from everyone else, because yeah. hijab started it, and he got everyone set on this path. <laughs> Do you see what the what the what the supreme Muslim apologist, the great honorable Muhammad hijab, who is this strong, fantastic guy, has caused? People are talking about golden showers in the super chats and in the comment section. They're talking about oral sex, anal sex. They're talking about all these things. We were just going to talk about Muhammad's child bride today. The yo, yo, a yo, AP, um, al along these lines, um, I talked about, you know, things I realized back in 2004, 2005. Another thing I realized back then, uh, and I mentioned that, um, that, you know, Christians would approach a Muslim organization and say, who, who would you like us to debate? And then they would pick their guy. And I realized back then, wait a minute. I don't think Christians are, are thinking seriously enough about these issues. Mm -hmm. They don't decide who the representative is. We get to decide who the representative is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we can we can also give a platform to someone that we think represents Islam well, right? We can. So, yeah. in other words, we don't have to say, "Hey, you organization, you go out and decide who you want to represent Islam." We can say, "No, we're asking this guy if he wants to come out and uh, and defend his prophet," right? And notice, I'm not saying pick the worst representative. That would be messed up. I'm saying. Pick the best representative, 
right? Pick the best representative. And the, the best representative of Islam is not someone who is completely out of touch with what Islam is really like. But um, along these lines, we actually have a massive role in deciding who Islam's champion apologists really are. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I definitely want it to be Muhammad Hijab. So we <laughs> might want to start, we might want to start going around referring to him as Islam's greatest apologist and so on and just, just keep rolling with that. And um, guys, well, you know, like whenever we mention him, you know, as, as Islam's greatest apologist, uh, the one who really gets people thinking <laughs> about what we won't say but the one who really gets us thinking is muhammad hijab and uh help this guy help this guy until yeah. everyone everyone knows him as the champion of islam yeah muhammad golden shower hijab <clears throat> help him push him push him help him go up there that sounds like a t-shirt <laughs> uh david um just very quickly I know we don't have very much time to talk about this, but people keep asking about our debate. What do we want? To, do, do you want to talk about that stuff after? We can we can talk about this stuff. Yeah, after we, we, no, we, we, can, we can mention it quickly. Guys, that, that one's uh, the, the, de the delays are, are on me. Um, cu <laughs> couple of things. Wonderful. couple things. One, I always underestimate how much time whatever I'm working on will actually take. I do so it's too. always I'm, I'm doing multiple other projects. I'm trying to get. Uh, other, you know, working on other platforms and websites and, and projects like that to sort as sort of backups, because I don't, you know, every day when I log on to YouTube, I think, is this the day they ban me the way the, to the, you know, the extent at which they mess with me. So I'm working on those things. I'm working on a 50 part series of videos that are being translated by people all over the world. We're getting a, a website that's up and running now, but we're getting stuff. on. So anyway, I got all these other projects on and I'm always, it's always in my mind. Do I jump on? Do I, do I, you know, hey, tomorrow am I going to record my opening statement for that debate with AP? And it's always like, no, I've got like eight other things to do. So my, my plan, because I said a couple weeks ago, I said, hey, why don't we start? Why don't we start uh, August first? And uh, my 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 theory was, okay, I'm, I'm working on this 50 part series. Let me go ahead and get like six or seven of those recorded ahead of time, and then I've got those, and those are all ready. Anyway, I've gotten one of those done. So. <clears throat> It's always in my head, hey, I'll just knock out this big chunk and then I'll have this space to do my debate with AP and then uh, doesn't uh, doesn't work out. Nevertheless, oh, and, and the other thing is I tend to focus on whoever's running their mouth the most, right? Like uh -huh. whoever's in the chat, I'm going to rape your mom, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go after your prophet, right? I'm going to blast your prophet. Unfortunately, that's that's constantly one particular religious group who's uh, begging me to make videos about them, whereas, whereas AP... I, I should come to your comment section and say, uh, yeah, you come. <laughs> golden shower, golden shower. Yeah. You, should start, <laughs> you should start talking trash. You should start talking trash. And I'll be like, oh, I got I to gotta jump on this. But uh, we do want to start it because I actually think I actually think it's good. I think it's good if we can have a friendly debate. It's a topic that we're both interested in. And I actually think it's good for our channels and for the preservation of our channels. I think we need to have some diverse content on there because if they're if youtube's banning channels and they're going after channels that that criticize islam well it, it actually helps if they're on the borderline of whether to mess with us or not and then they come to the channel ah yeah they got some videos about islam but they also have some videos on you know dealing with the moral mm -hmm. argument and all these other topics so i eh, will let them slide so i think i think it's good um I did want to talk to you right afterwards because there is. Uh, I thought of a, a a much easier project that we could do first. I am definitely, definitely, definitely in favor of starting the debate um, this month. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this month, but uh, I have one quick little side project. We, we'll need one or two more people involved with, but but it's cool. And uh, if if you like the idea, you don't have to be involved. But I th I think you like the idea because it's dope, and. Uh, and we could do that, and then, yeah, definitely, definitely before the end of the month. But I do, okay. I, I, I basically need to get a few episodes of this fifty-part series because I'm only releasing one a week. But there's other work. There's like that, and the transcript, and contacting people, and making sure everyone's translating it, and getting those back and stuff like this. So it's actually a bunch of work. But if I got the videos recorded, then that frees up some time that I don't need for for that. So mm -hmm. yeah, if I can get a couple of those done. We'll do that. We'll arrange that. We'll arrange that. We will, uh, we will announce that further. So j just, just uh, for clarification, David Wood and I were going to have a uh, a debate about morality, where David Wood is going to argue uh, that morality is uh, comes from you know from from the divine, where I argue that it doesn't, or I argue uh, for a different position. 
so, th so it was a it was going to be a big debate about morality since David Wood is a Christian and I'm uh, very much an atheist. So that's going to happen soon. We will figure that out. We'll have a have a have a conversation together, a private chat after this talk, and then uh, see when we can arrange every, any, everything, how we can arrange everything, when we will be able to post the whole stuff. And uh, once we have made an agreement to that, we will um, <clears throat> announce that in public unless one of us uh, suddenly uh, chickens out and says, hey, I never agreed to this debate. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, AP. <laughs> we, never said, we never said it had to be online on our YouTube channels. You have to face me in person. <laughs> Are you a coward? Coward. Golden showers. <laughs> Uh, okay. Wow. Hawaiian CC made a super chat and said, okay, I read that. It was about golden showers again. Magdalene G said, uh, Mimi is definitely projecting his fantasies and what what he does with Lily Dawa. Just admit you're gay. I'm sure your fans we, we, uh, will still cheer. Gamal Yahya said, <clears throat> debate on Christian morals apostate. Hypocrites. We are going to do that. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Sophia Films made a, has made a super chat and said, we're going to make Mohamed Hijab infamous. Thanks, boy. <laughs> Sarah Hagee made a super chat. Thank you so much, Sarah. And said, still loving the hijab golden shower poster idea, AP. LOL. I really, I'm, I'm really thinking about it. I want, I want to put it right back here uh, where people can see it or here, whatever it is, where people can see it. And it's, it's supposed to say the hijab and the Mohammed golden shower hijab or the golden boy of Islam or something like that. Just... What, what's, dis what's disgusting is if you try to look up a graphic for a poster, you're probably, you're probably going to get some nasty stuff. I know, if you I start know. like Googling stuff like that. I know, I know. Yeah. And, and, and that's on Mohammed hijab. I'm sorry. Uh... Oh, dude, dude, I, I have to say, my goodness, if hijab, I mean, Hijab's a speaker's corner guy. If he starts showing up at speaker's corner and everyone starts calling him golden showers because of this, <laughs> oh, it's going to be embarrassing. Please, everybody, please, everybody who can participate, who can spread this, please do that. <laughs> Uh, First Colossians 117 made a super chat and said, It is in the debate. Muhammad Hijab said, Who said Allah has parts and laughed? And, and, oh, yeah, yeah. and yeah, Elijah you know. and Elijah means God is with us. That's what he said. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the the point of that. Okay, so no, I, again, I can think of multiple things when you're talking about Allah's part because I did I did an entire series of videos with Anthony talking about uh, Allah's different uh, body parts and so on. But um, uh, I talked about Allah having a a literal body and parts and a judge, and I said that that Muslim scholars agree that this has to be literal because here and here's what's interesting. I I had heard that he's uh. A, a, a Salafi somewhere, or I just assumed it. I don't remember what, or it was just the crowd that he was running around with. So I assumed he's a Salafi. Salafis believe that Allah has a literal body, mm -hmm. a literal, a literal body with literal body parts, right? So I, I pointed this out that that Allah has a literal body according to scholars, and then he gets up, oh, what, what scholars, what, what scholars, what? Eh. And so he, and the, and the crowd laughed. And so I thought, oh, I don't actually know anything about this guy. So maybe he's not a Salafi, in which case I don't know what sect he is. In which he, case it's I very actually, unclear what he is actually. Yeah. yeah. No, I uh, I've heard since then that he's definitely a Salafi, and so it was just more it was just more deception. It's just he, he's just leading the crowd astray. That's what I that's again that's what I've heard. I've never again I, I've I, the number of Muhammad Hijab videos I've watched I can probably count on three or four fingers, mm -hmm. but someone told me what what are you talking about? This guy's a Salafi, and uh, anyway, if he is a Salafi, if you guys know if he's a Salafi, then yeah, that was. That was deception because Allah has a body according to Islam. I mean, well, I, I would say according to Islam, it's the Salafis who take these passages seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. According to according to uh, my people, <laughs> I was a a a, a, a mainstream uh, Muslim. Uh, I was a a a a, a Sufi at some point, and it really differs. Like according to one position, Allah is. Um, Allah doesn't have body parts and he doesn't have a, a, a body that you can perceive. He's outside of his creation. He's everywhere. According to the to the to the big Sufi perspective, it was even uh, 
deeper, it was basically very much like Eastern religions, like Indian religions, where it is seen as Allah is uh, immaterial. He's uh, not only outside of everything, he is everything. So Allah is in everything. It is like, it is like in a sense, pantheism, which is, which is very weird. It doesn't really combine very well with Christianity, with, with Islam. That's also one uh, perspective where Salafis, for example, consider Sufis uh, heretics and blasphemers because they teach and believe that Allah is everywhere within everything and everything is Allah or garbage like that. It's really, it's really very strange. If you ask Muslims where Allah is, they will all have very different opinions, and they will even kill each other over that. So, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. <clears throat> hey, check, check, check this out. So Sam Shimon is live right now. I can't listen to what he's saying. So I hope he's not making some really awesome point right now because I'm posting. Why are people watching this? You dummies just missed my epic live stream with the apostate prophet. <laughs> <Let's> see. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I, I, will, I, I want to finish these super chats. Give me a second. Um, David Textel made a super chat and said, remind us of how Yasir Qadi and Hijab deleted their videos on the holes in the Quran, trying to hide something we've all already seen. I know, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's called the, 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 how do you say it? Streisand effect? Streisand effect. The Streisand effect. Streisand you, effect. Yeah, where you try to hide something and it's, it becomes even more uh, obvious because you are so so clearly trying to hide it. So they're they're just yeah. damaging islam even more it's it's incredible and and just just so you know that's something that's something to think about for video topics and titles and thumbnails when people find out that you're trying to hide something mm -hmm. from them it makes them more interested in it and that's what yeah. happened with uh yasir Qadi and muhammad yeah. hijab mm -hmm. but uh uh in, in terms of video topics and stuff like that it's got to be the one the one the the two things that muslim apologists are trying to hide from you and stuff like that people <laughs> people click on that stuff yeah 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 be, we, it should really be pointed out much more. I should maybe focus on that stuff too. I didn't really focus on the whole mess that was going on. By the way, quick comment. Maxi Joseph said, Apostate Prophet, can you please debate with Mufti Abu Layth? Um, <laughs> I find Mufti Abu Layth a very um, interesting and funny fellow. I think he's hilarious. <laughs> he's, he's hilarious. He's awesome. Uh, I, would, I would love to have a conversation cha, with him cha, sometime. Cha, cha, cha. <laughs> you naughty, cha, naughty. Cha, cha. <laughs> I, I would love to have a conversation with him sometime or maybe even a debate i don't know if he actually wants to have a debate with me i think he would rather be interested in having debate with uh with muslims themselves because they all hate him but I, I'd, I'd like i'd like just because he seems like there are people that are obviously not easy to get along with right uh, he seems like someone who'd be easy to get along with right he seemed like a guy would be cool to have on the live stream and just have a discussion, right? And say, hey, you know, tell us, tell us your background and tell us why you believe in this, uh, why you believe in this, and have a discussion about it. So it seems like it'd be cool for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You naughty, naughty. Uh, Animal said in a super chat, Muhammad Hijab, Islam's golden boy. <laughs> Unknown mind your own said in the super chat, we should make a great big deal of the hundred year anniversary of the standardized Quran. Uh, yeah, to to twenty twenty four. Uh huh. Arash de Bazar Jr. said, uh, if Islam pays me $10,000 a week, I will be their only good apologist. I think that was a reference to, uh, to Craig Considine, who is doing Islamic apologetics as a Christian person, which is totally genuine, I believe. Uh, Nataverse made a super chat. Thank you, Nataverse, for being here, by the way, and moderating the chat. Uh, golden Ape will be a mashup of Grape Ape and Hijab's Golden Shower Obsession. I get it. <laughs> Uh, K11S19 said in a super chat before Muhammad went to Medina, Islam was brought to India by traders who wanted uh, to save, who wanted to save Islam from persecution and given refuge by southern king by southern Indian kings. But Muslims like Persians and Turks destroyed North Indian temples 200 years later. Hmm. Detail I don't know about. Okay, that's that's all the super chats. But thank you so much, uh, K eleven S nineteen. I bet my 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 voice sounds disgusting right now. I bet it's very sounds hard. Fine. To, it's it's very hard to listen because <clears throat> I can barely speak. Uh, okay, I think we should be through with this uh, conversation. It's it's been, it's been much longer than I thought it would. It's been so different from what I thought it would be about, but it was it was worth it. Uh, I I I, ex I ex it's funny because I expected. Based on the topic, I expected a disgusting, disgusting conversation. It still ended up being a disgusting conversation, but 
It was just a different kind. Uh, it was about the wrong Mohammed. We were, we were expecting yeah. we were expecting mm -hmm. a disgusting conversation tonight with all the sources about the holy prophet Mohammed, the honorable, morally sublime, holy prophet Mohammed from the seventh century, and we ended up having a very long, disgusting conversation about the the honorable uh, Muslim apologist Mohammed Hijab, who has really made a big show of himself. I want to applaud him here i want to thank him here in the name of everybody who has uh <laughs> who has enjoyed this this conversation this chat who has uh, enjoyed the laughter who has who has laughed at home i want to thank in the name of everybody in the name of david wood himself and and myself to mohammed hijab who has made this great service who has provided great content for us tonight thank you mohammed hijab we love you very much you're you're our hero dude you're our hero thank you so much and hey, if you want to talk about the whole debate stuff, you can maybe still contact me. Despite your behavior tonight, I might uh, still, I don't know, converse with you. I'll see. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thank you so much. We will hopefully um, <clears throat> be back soon again and have a live chat uh, at a different time, talk about uh, the other disgusting Mohammed. Um, <laughs> David, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, stay away from Islam. Oh. Oh, that comes from oh, okay. Stay away from Islam and stay away from golden showers. Don't don't Google golden showers tonight. <laughs> stay away from Islam. Uh.